test, test.
This is Chris Allen of the MMA Fight Bible and John Boy McElroy of Martial Arts Chat Podcast with your weekly MMA Power Hour news update. In the MMA news this week, Israel Adesanya and Kelvin Gaslam look set to throw down at UFC 236 for the interim middleweight belt. This follows a last-minute cancellation of Whitaker's title fight and Adesanya's win over Anderson Silva on that same night at UFC 234. Whitaker's agent had released a statement last week saying that he knew his client would be out until late summer. ESPN are now reporting that at UFC 236 they'll crown an interim middleweight champion and it seems like that matchup will be the last style bender versus Kelvin Gaslam. Cain Velasquez still maintains that his knee giving out was the reason for his loss against Francis Ngannou at UFC Phoenix. The former champ said at Sunday's press conference he couldn't believe what had happened. He went on to say that he felt great coming out there, relaxed, and then I took one step with my left foot, I felt something pop, I tried to make another step and it gave out of me. The knee gave out, I can't believe it. But upon further examination of the finish, it looks like at least one of Ngannou's counter punches landed cleanly and Velasquez was asked how much of his power could contributed to the finish, although he is set to be out for some time now with a lengthy injury. This has led to great debate online in the MMA community, some calling for Cain Velasquez simply to retire due to the number of injuries he's had over his career. And meanwhile, Daniel Cormier has said he'd be happy to defend his heavyweight belt against the Predator and get some revenge for his teammate Velasquez. Following a busy weekend of Bellator, the company have announced that Michael Venom Page will take on title holder Douglas Lima in the semi-final welterweight tournament in May. This May card is sitting to take shape now as it's already been announced that it will be headlined by Pitbull versus Michael Chandler and Jack Hager is set to make his second professional fight on that card as well. Mike Perry has received lots of congratulations from his MMA peers following his recent engagement. However, there was one post online that caused a bit of a stir, and as you can imagine, that was from Kobe Covington. Kobe took to Twitter to write, Good thing y'all live in Central Florida, where marrying your horse is legal. Needless to say, it caused some backlash. Anthony Smith, who takes on John Jones next weekend for the UFC light heavyweight belt, said of Kobe, He's a scared cat off camera, the most skittish person I've ever met. George St. Pierre, GSP, is uh, announcing his retirement. Uh, well, apparently they're saying it's tomorrow, Thursday. I don't know if there's an official uh, statement uh, out just now, but it seems to be the rumour. Chris, um, can you tell us any more on this? Well, at the moment, all he's come out and said is tomorrow at a press conference, he will be officially announcing his UFC retirement. There's also rumours going around that it's, he said, because the recent, he was trying to get something set up with Khabib's team. But unfortunately, that looks like it was falling through. So he decided the best thing was to do was to walk away. But I think we're all going to get the answer we're looking for tomorrow in the press conference. So we'll all be tuning in. And he's the only man who really knows why he's leaving. So the rest of it's just rumours. So I'm really looking forward to seeing his conference. And yeah, definitely tune into that one. Yeah, for sure, man. There'll be a lot of eyes on that. Uh, another thing that's uh, been in the news this week, um, Chris Lieben, he seems to be in a, a spot of bother with uh, bare knuckle boxing and, and bass rootings involved. Chris, what's, uh, what's the story there, mate? Well, yeah, well, Chris Lieben, um, he recently signed with the ever-growing, you know, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, which is getting so popular at the moment with people like Chris Lytle going there uh, and a few others as well. Um, but he recently left the World, World Bare, Knuckle, Bare Knuckle Fighting Federation, which not many people know about. Um, the president is Bus Rutan, the UFC Hall of Famer. And um, the reason he's left them, he had a fight against ex-UFC veteran um, Phil Brony in Wyoming at the end of last year. He did win the fight, but unfortunately only received 10% of his pay. So as you can imagine, three and a half months fighting to try and get his money. He had to leave the organization to guarantee him a fight somewhere else. So yeah, it was really not good enough. Um, but the reason he did stick around for three and a half months of waiting, because I know none of us would, we would have left a long time ago, is because the president being Bash Root and a friend of his for 18 years plus, kept reassuring him day after day that this will get sorted. The owners, they aren't crooks, they will pay you. We're just waiting for the money to go through. The banks are frozen, excuse, excuse, excuse. I could talk for ages about the excuses they've had, John. And um, so at the end of the day, he's having to take legal action. But he's just a bit disappointed, really, because after years, he doesn't understand why Bass is protecting this guy, especially when Lieben's found out the owner's been suit and been taken to court saying um, he's been laundering drug money for his business. Oh. He's been estate, estate agent, um, estate, um, like real estate, real estate fraud. So, yeah, it's just he doesn't quite understand what's going on here. So this guy has been known for this in the past from people who have commented on Lieben's statuses online. 
I recommend people to go online and check out Lieben's YouTube video explaining exactly what happened. He explains in a lot better detail than I have just done. And yeah, definitely worth checking out. And there's two companies, right? So there's the Bare Knuckle Boxing Federation. Is that correct? So it's the Bear, World Bare Knuckle Fighting Federation, which was set up last year. Yes, yeah, Bass Rutan's the president of that one. But yeah. the one we keep hearing about is the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, BKFC. That's the one we keep hearing about currently. And yeah, there's a lot of guys um, making the moves. Um, one of the guys that um, just recently retired from the UFC, he, he, he bounces up our way in Scotland, uh, Mark the Hand of God beer. I know he's got a fight coming up for that. Um, popular with, uh, with MMA guys as well. Um, why do you think that is, mate? Well, I think what they... You, what a lot of people see online is nowadays of people having bare knuckle fights in the streets, you know, like in all sorts of areas, which they're not professional fighters. So I think these guys now, you know, they're getting past their prime a bit. So they're thinking, OK, if I want to get back in there, I've got to try something different. And they've got the skills to still land the punches. And with no gloves on, they're going to find themselves being more successful in the industry opposed to people who haven't been fighting MMA all their lives and coming through them, coming through the system as an up and comer. So I think that's attracting them, and we don't really know how much they're getting paid really at the moment, but hey, it could be big bucks, it could be little, but they all seem to be going there at the moment. They're all interested, so maybe they're all following, um, was it Johnny Hendricks that originally went there, That's John? right, yeah, I remember seeing the Johnny Hendricks one as well. Yeah, Paul So maybe Felder. they all followed suit with him. Definitely. Paul Felder, he was fighting with one lung at the weekend, that was the rumour. Uh, what's the latest on uh, the Irish Dragon? Well, all I've seen at the moment is lying in a hospital bed, basically complaining that, look, I've got another lung, just go get me a beer. <laughs> <laughs> so it's good to see he's in good spirits, you know. You saw him at the end of the fight, in the post-fight interview um, with Anik. Was it Anik he was with? I can't remember now, in the cage. And he didn't, he didn't seem to, out of breath, he didn't seem in any much pain. If anything, he was, too, he was quite emotional about the whole thing. So he hides it well, and it just shows you how tough Paul Felder really is, yeah, you know. Yeah, God. You know, you've seen, you go back to the days of Tim Sylvia breaking his arm and, and still winning, you know? And now we're looking at people collapsing lungs and still winning, so, no, yeah, it's incredible. Unbelievable, man. Uh, last bit of business before we wrap up. Donald Cerrone, Conor McGregor, it's still uh, rumouring its way around the news. What's the latest? Are we any further forward with this, Chris? Oh, there's so much news flying up in the air about the Cerrone versus McGregor at the moment. Um, well, recently Dana White has come out and says this fight hasn't isn't a done deal because Joe Rogan had quoted that this is pretty much a done deal. This fight's happening later this year. It's getting posted everywhere in the UK newspapers as well. But Dana White has come out and said this deal isn't even close to being done. But McGregor and Cerrone are definitely both up for this. They're 100% up for this fight. Dana White's a great fan of people who want to come and fight. And if they want to fight each other, it would make a lot make a lot of money, I think, as well. And I think, as we know, Cerrone, he's not trying to push now for... He, he says he's trying to push for those title fights, but I think he's just looking for his paychecks now, which he has come out and said in the past. So this would be a perfect fight for him. And winning it, well, what happens if he does win it, John? Yeah, I know, man. That's the thing. You would look at it thinking Cerrone's finally getting the payday he deserves, but you're exactly right, mate. What if he does? What if he sparks out the notorious one? Where does he go from there? In 13 seconds. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> good pee, man. Good pee. I think, I think he'd wrestle the hell out of McGregor, to be fair to you. But yeah. um, lots of rumours. Tony Ferguson's up in the air as well. So we'll have to wait and see. The rest have called it. This is Chris Allen and John McElroy with your weekly MMA Power Hour news update. Coming up next is another knockout episode of the MMA Power Hour with Colin and Adam. Until next time, we're tapping out.
to. Get ready to feel the power. Can you feel the power? I hope you can. This is the MMA Power Hour. Colin Crandall here, your host, still fighting with a ruptured disc and a pinched nerve, so I'm not feeling super powerful, but I think we do have a powerful show uh, provided uh, that we will provide to you tonight, and I'm really excited to be here. I uh, love uh, talking to you and uh, talking MMA. Uh, it's my passion, as you know, and I'm not sure if today we can bring in Dr. Adam Rorda, uh, but I think we can. Dr. Adam Rorda, roar your way in here. Let's hear a roar. Roar. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm right here calling the... Whew. Yeah. What a day. <laughs> what, what a, a day trying to get all these new graphics, new things going on. And, uh, hey, I, I I like it. Yeah, absolutely. It's right. You know, I do, too. Hope you all do, too. too. Uh, special thanks to the guys doing the news, the members of our team uh, from Scotland, John McElroy, and from England, uh, Chris Allen. Really, really thank the guys. Big respect to you all as amazing MMA journalists. Really appreciate your contribution to the show. It is invaluable. Uh, we've got an amazing show for you here. Uh, all kinds of great things uh, to talk about and, and, and great guests. And uh, in the meantime, uh, Dr. Adam Rorta, you look great as as always what an interesting card this last card was uh i think we both had uh or you know what i had kane velasquez were you on the fence i don't think you went out and picked francis but i, I, I think you were on the fence in that fight i i was on the fence but not really uh i i was saying kane. no kane yeah, yeah i thought so yeah yeah we both thought so and i you know there's some dispute i mean he hits hard did he get clipped? It looks like he did. I know a lot of people are saying that was the only thing and his knee didn't give out. That's a lot of crap. His knee did give out. Was was getting hit a part of the equation uh, that caused him to go down? Yeah, but it looks like he was doing almost like a full splits when his knee gave out. And, uh, you know, that's a big problem. And I think Dominic Cruz called it. If his knee uh, <clears throat> hadn't given out there, hard to say. Don't know that he would have won, but really unfortunate for Cain Velasquez, though. Um, a lot of weird fluky wins. Not calling that a fluke, but a lot of strange victories uh, with Megan Anderson winning with the toenail across the eye against Kat Singano and several other things uh, that, I, that are, I'm not remembering exactly what they are, but a weird year for our sports so far here in 2019. A uh, fun one, though. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Definitely some Just throwing great... everybody for a loop, and, and uh, I'm enjoying being on the seat or the edge of my seat here. It's one of the most enjoyable seasons I've I've had in, in all things mixed martial arts. Excuse me, my hair's flying around and I look like a, I, I don't know. But. No, you look the, <laughs> the mane of a lion. The lion's mane, Adam Wolfman, Rorda, the lion fist. Uh, you are here and uh, that's the key thing. Yeah, so uh, a lot of uh, interesting things. What a big card though. You know, everyone I know is looking maybe somewhat past the next couple of cards to that UFC 235. Man, is that one of the most stacked uh, cards we've seen yet? I think all of us are just kind of holding our breath that, that there are aren't any of those fights that fall through you know and i think that we're aware it could happen but i think that card's so stacked that even if uh one of the fights or even two fell through it would still be okay but wouldn't it be nice if none of them fell through and that card remained as stacked as it is now i'm sure you'd be excited uh huh Adam. beyond excited and then and, and we have our uh, guest jeremy on tonight who's going to be uh uh, part of that event. Yes. I'm super stoked for that. And yep. yeah, you're saying this is just an extremely stacked event. I mean, it's it's almost like we just keep, get, keep getting handed event after event that's just getting stacked. And it's, it seems to me like the matchmakers at UFC are, are doing a lot better at, at figuring out how to do this. Yeah, it seems that way. And obviously they've always known how to do it, but for some reason they weren't doing it. So, <laughs> so I, yeah. I, 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 I wouldn't go as far as saying they always knew. I think they've been rotating in and out for a while with yeah, the matchmakers. Yeah, I think so. I, yeah, you know, but this, this group seems to be getting it right, and, and I'm enjoying it thoroughly. And uh, March 2nd here is, is just going to be absolutely amazing. Absolutely. Credit to Mick Maynard and Sean Shelby. I mean, they've been doing it together. They're uh, matchmaking for quite a while, and I don't know, just maybe they felt like it was the right timing. Hopefully we'll see more stat cards because that's what's needed, I think. I mean, not that people aren't uh, a fan of every UFC event out there because everyone's got some fighters they like, and there are some fighters that have some name recognition on each card, but I think maybe they read the writing uh, on the wall that said, you know what, maybe not as many cards that, that don't have uh, at least... Uh, a couple big names and 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 you know with the march 2nd ufc 235 card they uh, they've definitely answered that so hopefully that will be the start of a trend where we get a lot of big cards and uh still get some hot prospects some chances to fight but 
definitely uh, have it uh, fan friendly and so it's worth the pay-per-view because uh, a lot of the talk going on is that it isn't and you know and I would agree with that when we don't have more than one recognizable fight on a card so anyway Dr. Adam Rorta do we I think we do why don't we uh, why don't I, I throw it uh, to Dr. Adam Rorta and I, uh, I will take over for a second yes. just because we are going to go into a video here from Lion Fight last week we got an awesome uh, interview post fight with the main event uh, winner of uh, Chip Marazza Pollard, Pollard yep, and, and defending his cruiserweight line of fight cruiserweight. Colin had a blast with that. Yep. I can tell you all night. He and I were actually having a blast just being there. Uh, Although it was colder than hell, it was insane. <laughs> and I'm getting old, and it's really cold. My bones were breaking. I could hear them rattling. I'm breaking, but they were rattling. Anyway, oh, I, I, and that's one of the things brought up in this video. You'll see it. Watch the interview. Before we go into the interview, I want to go ahead and give a huge shout out to Digi South for helping out with our social media marketing for all of you fighters out there that are tuning in looking for some help with social media marketing uh they work with some of the biggest social influencers out there have the reputation have the capability to do it for you get in touch go to digisouth.co also i want to give an even bigger shout out to cross train mma fighter for providing the t-shirts for mma power hour and uh, as well for just being such a great supporter of the show go to cross mma fighter.com to get some awesome apparel from them uh sport your stuff let everybody know that you're a fighter or a fan and last but not least probably the most important uh, of people i want to give a shout out right now would be combat press go to combatpress.com where every fight has a story i go there every day to check out their news they keep me updated uh, not too long ago i would say i was a novice in the area of of fight information between fighters and and trying to get it figured out now i i, I put myself up in the top tier of of people when it comes to knowledge and it's all because of combat press and also my man Colin over here thank but you. Uh, thank you. Uh, with that being said uh, Lion Fight 51 was a great event and we will go ahead and go right on over to this video from the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum Chip, the surgeon for Aza Pollard. How did you feel about that performance tonight? It was solid. Um, I mean, I'm never satisfied with my performances, no matter what. I always like to go back and watch them because it's always tough right after. It, it, it always feels different than it looks. So I won't like judge it too much until I actually go back and watch it. But um, he was tough, man. He was tricky. I knew. He was going to be like taller than me. I knew he was going to be rangy. I knew he was going to be tough and strong. I mean, like, hey, he's Mexican too. We both got that Mexican blood. We're here in A. It's Cervantes versus Marasa. Like, that's a beautiful thing out here in, uh, in LA. All my family from East LA and everywhere is out here. Uh, but yeah, it was it was a tough fight. He was uh, he was tricky. He uh, like timed me a couple times. Had a couple nice sweeps. Like uh, one or two on him. It was a good fight. He was uh, like he didn't really show that his leg was hurting that much. Even though like Atala was it was getting a little a little bruised up and everything, and that's my MO, just kind of chopping them down. I fight all these tall guys, but I have uh, I got pretty hard leg kicks and a pretty good jab, so as soon as I see that blood uh, coming out of the nose and that leg turning purple, that's that's how I know I'm in my element and stuff is going uh, going well. Absolutely. Those legs were looking really, really beat up, and I was hearing your coaching staff yelling, chop that tree down. What were you hearing from my uh, crew, De La Grate and crew Massey, as far as instructions uh, for your, your what was going on there? Tell, tell me a little bit about what they were telling you to do uh, during some of those challenging uh, aspects of the fight. Managing the range a little bit better. Um, I think the first round, I was just kind of like taking unnecessary shots, like letting him kick my arms a little bit too much, letting him like get a little bit too many kicks off, just so I could just like just walk through him and put my hands on him, just like try to get those. Because I knew, like I said, he's gonna be long, he's gonna be tall. I knew I had to like get in there and. Uh, and put my punches to work because that's how I set up all my kicks and everything like that. I go from hands to everything else. But um, from the first round to the second round, I think I, I listened to him a little bit and I started managing that range because 
And I think I'm at my best when I'm uh, being a little bit elusive, kind of on the outside, making you miss, making you kind of second guess your technique and your range and like you're swinging, you're not hitting anything, not just letting somebody just kick my arms and kick my legs just, just because like it's not, it's not affecting me too much. Like don't just give away these feet free shots but uh yeah so that was, that was the main thing just manage that range and then once i started doing damage to the leg just keep on attacking it but uh i think when i was attacking the leg i, I got away from my other weapons got away from the teeth a little bit but like i said i got to go back and watch the fight and really yeah. pick it and see what i do well and what i can do well. there's always something to do better next time absolutely were you hurt at all at any point no no nothing hurt he had, uh, he's like, he's got some pop a couple times, like, kind of saw the stars a little bit, but like, I mean, that's nothing new. It's like, whatever. At that point, it's like, it's just like, whatever. But, um, like, yeah, I mean, the kicks to the arm, they always add up, but, uh, there's nothing. I mean, we're both warriors in there, like, he didn't show that his leg was hurting, like, nothing he was doing to me was going to stop me from coming forward. It's just, you know, that's part of the game, man. You got to take those lumps and then keep on coming. Absolutely. Absolutely, man, you guys are absolute tremendous warriors. When do you think we might see you in action again? Uh, we'll see. Uh, I just take them one by one. Whenever they tell me I'm fighting, they just point and I shoot. I don't really like pick where or anything like that. Um, whenever when they offered me LA, I, I jumped that there was no way I was not going to fight here. This is the first time I got to fight on the West Coast. I've been fighting for 10 years now between MMA and Muay Thai. All my family lives out here on the West Coast. This is the first time any of them have ever seen me fight live. So this was this was awesome, man. This, this, it was a, a dream come true fighting on the West Coast. Finally. We're so glad to, to have you here. Unfortunately, we brought your East Coast weather here. It made you comfortable, yeah, it's, right? It's, I mean, it was it was it's, it was a little bit different fighting outside. Um, I mean, the cold. I mean. I, I, I shot a box in the snow. There's videos of it. Yeah, but uh, but still, like when you're out there, and I mean, I, I still can't feel my left foot because of how cold it was. Like I was like, like my body was all right, but my feet, man, especially my left foot. So I think that's another reason I stopped throwing like the teams and the, and the kicks and everything because my foot was just completely numb. The toes of my right feet, uh, my right foot was a little bit numb. But uh, that was the main thing. Was the, as far as the weather, it was just like my feet were. Where it just oh, yeah. so yeah. it's like that kind of affected it a little bit, but still, it's, it was. I mean, whatever, rain, sleet, snow, I'll fight yeah. the snow, heat, whatever. I'll, yeah, I'll fight again right now. But. You'll do your surgery, brother, That's and right. uh, it was impressive. Another great win for Team City on top. Yes, sir. Congratulations again, Chip. Pleasure to talk to you in person. Thank you. you take care. Thank you. Be well. That was Chip Maraza Pollard, the surgeon. Victorious in defending his Lion Fight Cruiserweight Championship title for the fifth time. Absolutely a pleasure to watch this man. He's a great champion. Hope you like that. Uh, it was so cold. I mean, I know for those of you in the Midwest where Adam and I are both from, uh, as well as the East Coast, wouldn't think it was. But something about L.A. when it gets, you know, into the 40s and in the, th the even the high 30s, just the, the, the dryness of it and the wind just really makes it feel similar to like a zero degree day, uh, you know, that uh, that you guys are used to in the Midwest and in the East Coast. And man, I mean, even a couple layers didn't uh, didn't make us comfortable or blasting the heat on, on the way home. We carpooled there. Anyway, uh, so hope you enjoyed that. Chip, the surgeon, Maraza Pollard, amazing fighter. I think that was his fifth or sixth title defense of his Lion Fight Cruiserweight Championship. Not easy to do, and, and he's on a tear. <clears throat> you might want to check him out on CBS Sports. Uh, they're going to be uh, on, I think, at least five or six times a year. So don't miss. Yeah, don't miss definitely life. watch him. He, he makes it look effortless. Yeah, uh, yeah. Compared to almost any of his yeah. competition. That, yeah. Did you uh, notice that when he came out, it was he was so relaxed, so calm. In fact, I think he didn't even throw anything for the first 15, 20 seconds. Him, and then him, it was you know him and Eddie both yeah. the same way. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's very relaxed absolutely too. and eddie abisola was on our show too a big congratulations to him having been on our show about a year ago and uh he looked really really good really good too tough opponent for both of them uh and uh and big respect uh, to uh the champion chip maraza pollard congrats on another defense and uh eddie abisola uh, working his way uh back to uh a uh hopefully a title uh, in the line fight organization uh great fights and uh so we still have a few minutes left uh, till our next fight. So, Dr. Adam Rorda, 
on that big card, let's talk about that big UFC 235. There's a couple things between now and then, but uh, what do you think? Ben Askren against ruthless Robbie Lawler in the debut, Ben Askren's debut in the UFC. Um, how do you think that fight, how do you think that fight goes down? This one's really tough for me. Um, uh, listen, it, it, Askren hasn't fought in the UFC yet. To me, he's one of the greatest fighters out there, but he has not fought in the UFC yet. Uh, I mean, point blank, it's just a different level than any other organization. So, uh, I don't know. This is just a real tough call for me. I, I, I want to say Askren, but it, it being his UFC debut, I kind of feel like Lawler's going to come in and, and really just uh, take it. Well, Lawler is definitely the, the far better striker, that we know. But Askren, the far better wrestler, and Askren has really been able to neutralize really good strikers uh, like Lyman Good, like uh, Douglas Lima, even though Douglas Lima, I think, has improved since uh, back when he fought Askren, which was, I think, four or five years ago. But he's been able to handle it, and, and he is the favorite, I think, Dr. Uh, Adam Rota. I, I think he but, is. But know, it, three that... or four to one, but it doesn't mean that Lawler can't catch him if that happens though if you think Lawler's going to win you think that's early or uh or late do you think he's going to catch him or do you think he's going to not stop ben but just somehow manage to stay on his feet enough and outpoint ben with strikes what's your thought i uh, he's gonna outpoint him i mean i i don't see this one just being an easy one so our guest is ready any moment so okay uh yeah it, <sighs> I, I just see Lawler coming in and, and pulling his his typical strike fest and, and Askren. Uh, I, I mean, he's a wrestler, and I normally favor the wrestlers, and I normally would Askren in general. Uh, but coming in in the UFC, first fight UFC, I, I just feel like the lights, the action, the exposure, it's going to get in his head a little bit. It already has, I can tell. Um so you think it might be a little bit of an adrenaline dump? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think that's really what's going to happen here. I think with he's... Lawler, such a veteran of like what twenty-five UFC fights, the opposite for him, right? He's... Now, I don't want to discredit Askren because he has fought in large enough organization with a lot of lights and exposure as well. But it's just a different game coming in, fighting in your own country, uh, playing the game. Pay-per-view, uh, huge moment, yeah. Las Vegas. Yeah, understandable. And it is possible, and I'm sure the people that are betting on Lawler are counting on that as well. I don't know. I, th I think I think Askren's going to win it, but it is a dangerous fight. And I think if uh, if somehow Robbie can stop the first takedown and, and even like a, maybe a second takedown, that could start to be a little scary for Ben, but Ben's really determined. It's going to be really interesting, and uh, and you know it's it's such an important fight for both guys because the first fight for Ben, having fought for years or, or or you know kind of wanted for years to be fighting in the UFC, and and uh, the powers that be not wanting him to be uh, fighting in the UFC to finally get there. He doesn't want to lose his first fight. On the flip side of it, Robbie, if he wins this fight kind of puts them to an extent back in the thick of things and at that crowded uh, welterweight uh, division. But if he loses, then possibly there might be talk about uh, people wanting him to retire. So it's 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 a tough fight. Both are good guys. Hate to see either of them lose, but uh, someone must lose unless uh, somehow it's a draw. So we'll see. Anyway, uh, so yeah, we're looking pretty good whenever Dr. Adam Rorty gets that going. I'll keep talking here in the meantime. I'm hope ready to roll it out, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. We can go straight into a Skype dance here. Call Rock and roll, it. Skype Dance City. Hello, it's Pearl. Hi, hi, Pearl. Can you hear me? It's Colin. Hi, Colin. How are you? Doing very well. How about yourself? I'm doing amazing, thank you. Excellent, so all we need to do is have you hit that video button. It should be the one that looks like a camera or a screen with a line going across it. And then we'll have a, a picture or we'll have a video of you on screen. And so uh, while you're working on that, I'll give you a proper intro. And then if there's any problems, we can come back to it. But uh, we're so happy to have this next guest on the show. And I think I see her right there. Yep, we got her. And uh, she is a fantastic uh, challenger, a recent challenger for an Invicta flyweight title, a super popular fighter, a fighter with just tremendous heart and guts, and one of the more popular fighters out there. I've been a fan of hers for a while. Uh, we're so happy to have on the show Pearl Gonzalez. Welcome to the show, Pearl. 
Hello. Thank you so much for having me on. My pleasure. It's really a pleasure to meet you. And uh, wanted to give you credit for a really tough fight. You really went at it uh, against an incredibly experienced opponent. I mean, you've been fighting for six years. She's been fighting, I think, for 13 years. And, uh, you know, so you still really being, you know, kind of young in the sport, you know, fought a really, really tough fight. It's unfortunate with the eye poke, but I definitely want to give you credit for a battle against, uh, you know, uh, a person really who could have been champion in many people's opinion a few years ago and uh, and I think you have a great a great future how did that fight feel when you when you came into it were you expecting what she threw at you did the fight go kind of to an extent the way you were thinking or or, or if not how was it different yes the fight she she fought exactly um, how I anticipated her to fight um, she was I I did anticipate her to come out a little bit more aggressive uh, and she actually came out and was patient. I did know that going into this fight that she was very experienced, very patient, did an, does an amazing job of just keeping her pace, um, not going too too far past where she is to preserve herself, um, where she can go early on to preserve herself for the later rounds. Um, but, you know, I knew I was going to wear her out. I knew that I had better conditioning, better cardio, that I would recover faster. I tend to do better as the rounds go on and just continue to get warm up and get a little bit more comfortable in there. Um, I felt I was a little hesitant and could have uh, stepped in a little bit more, um, especially once I found my range. I, I, I knew I'd have a longer longer i knew i had a longer reach therefore i knew that i would be able to touch her and i, I just throw more yeah. um naturally so uh, i wish i would have as soon as i found my range i found my range early on i caught her with a nice right hand um in the opening of the first round and i wish i just would have capitalized on that a little bit more um i went to the ground very early in the first round knowing that she was much stronger than me, knowing that her strength was going to be one of the big, biggest obstacles that I had to get through. So that was a uh, key mistake on my end, um, going to the ground. The the first couple takedowns were initiated by me. I was going for a Kimura. Um, and so, I don't know, I scored that first round. I thought it was I was, thought it was very close. It could have gone either way. I did give her the second and third round. She came out. She was strong. She had great positioning on me, great control. Um, and then in the fourth round, I felt like I was, I was, you know, had my second win. I was making my way back. I was tagging her with my jabs um, and just finding, my, finding a home for it and looking for my right hand. Um, and I did know going into this fight, though, that the fourth or fifth round would probably be where I would um, get my finish or the opportunity to, to take this fight would present itself. Um, I'm, it's unfortunate it got stopped halfway through that fourth round. Uh, I, I personally would like to see the statistics of the fight. I want to see how many uh, strikes were thrown, how many were landed. I just want to see those numbers and look at those. I did give her the control and the grappling. Um, it was a fair call. You know, it was unfortunate. It was a fair call. Uh, she, she won the second and third for sure. Um, but it's unfinished business. I still had a round and a half um, to continue and finish my fight. And a lot can happen in, in that time. And so um, I think it's only fair that I, I, I get the opportunity to finish out my fight. I agree 100%. And have you heard anything from Shannon Knapp and company about whether they're going to run this back or possibly or that they're not or anything? Have you heard anything either way? No, you know, I think that um, Shannon messaged me. She, she, you know, congratulated me on a good fight and just said that she give her some time to make this right. And I think that Shannon is a very fair um, boss and, and president. And, and I think that she will give me the the rematch. You know, the fight was cut short. Yeah. And um, I was promised five rounds for an opportunity at a belt. And, uh, you know, so I, I can just be hopeful. I stay positive. That's what, what I do. I'm optimistic. I'll continue on my end to do whatever I can to create the opportunity and create another fight. Um I'm getting ready to go to Thailand, you know, and I'm already focused on getting back to training. I was very fortunate and blessed to walk away with a, a sore knee from a couple of those kicks um, and, a, and a busted lip, but my lips healed and my, my knee needs a little bit, a couple more days off of rest and I'll be ready to go, ready to get back at it. Excellent. So not a ton of damage overall. 
No, not at all. Excellent. And you know, I like that you already have come down, come up with the, the things that you could improve in that next fight. That's really impressive that you've already gone to look at the, you know, to look at the blackboard and look at the video and, and decide to formulate a plan on what you could have done differently and not initiated the ground. And also the fact that, you know, and I'm, I'm almost seeing this as a theme, this next thing, is that it seems like a lot of these veterans change it up a little bit for each opponent especially if they're really normally aggressive they'll sit back they'll do something to surprise you right which is what she did you know right. and and so i think that now that you kind of know you know that she does have kind of a good game plan and she is going to try to mix it up i think you can definitely be even more effective and uh and i definitely would hope they would make that rematch they're not making rematches enough in mma i don't know why maybe they're catering or trying to think they cater to just such a young audience that doesn't want to see anyone again but in reality in combat sports for years you know if you gave it a really tough fight and if there are not really a lot of other high profile high ranked fighters in that division there's absolutely no reason why they wouldn't run it back and i'm not discrediting the girls the women in at 125 and invicta but i think you're about as high profile you know as there is there and and i would think they should definitely run it back um so i hope so now one thing i tell you she looked like a really big flyweight in there did you notice that she looked like a full bantamweight to me she was huge i knew that uh when i took this fight that she was just really big um for the division and very strong and she felt like it she felt very heavy and um you know strong so i knew that that's that's just you know whatever she's doing she's got it down to a science yeah. I, my hat's off to her because she's really strong and and does really well in this weight class um with that strength yeah i i mean you know i you know i hope i just hope she's not cheating and i know you're not saying anything on that and i'm not trying to either but her shoulders were popping and her traps were popping so much i mean i and and, and she's a tough fighter i i honestly have had vanessa porto on my radar of women's fighters for years and but she just looked she looked bigger than she's ever looked before i'm not trying to say anything right but i just hope because we don't need we don't need that i mean it's not that other women haven't had that happen but it seems like it's a little bit more prevalent in men's fighting and i think if women start to to do it that could really really un uneven uh, the playing field and uh and we don't need that so hopefully that's not the case but otherwise she's like you said in, in the positive way that you look at things she other if it's not that then she really has the weight cut dialed in but you know i think uh i think you can still handle it so yeah admiral fights admirable fight so pearl you you have had your name out there you're a, a really amazing positive person but i know some people know this but a lot of people don't tell us a little bit about your backstory how did you get from not being uh an mma fighter to being a professional high level MMA fighter you know going way back to, to your your childhood and, and, and the highlights as much as we can fit into let's say maybe five minutes let us know a little bit about the about where you come from and why you fight well first thing is I love to fight and when I say that I don't just mean I love training I, lo I love you know I love the competition no I love to fight period I have been fighting my whole life I've been fighting on the streets I've been fighting in the cage I've just been fighting my whole life um, I come from Chicago. I was born and raised in Chicago in a tough neighborhood, you know, uh, the product of two uh, drug addicted parents. Mm. Um, my mom got clean um, or excuse me, my father got clean before my mom did. And so my dad raised me as a single parent um, and growing up uh, for the majority of our of my upbringing, it was just him and I. I do have sisters, um, but they didn't live with us. We were kind of all split up when they took us away from my mom at a young age. And so growing up with just my dad and I, he needed something for me because I was an angry kid and I was, you know, I just needed an outlet. Um, living in a tough neighborhood growing up, I was uh, exposed to gangbangers and, and drug dealing and drugs and all of this at a very young age. And so uh, he found a gym for me, um, a mixed martial arts gym. I, I, my first competition was pancreation at 11 years old. I traveled to San Diego actually and fought Team USA on a Frank uh, Shamrock card. Nice. And um, it was a Team USA versus Team Canada. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I've never really went and depth. went back to get the facts. But I do believe that even a young GSP was on this, the oh, can wow. Canadian team. Nice. Um, and so I, yeah, I've been competing since then. Uh, I've done jujitsu, pancreation, boxing, kickboxing. I've competed as an amateur in all avenues. 
Um, I took a break as a teenager and um, got into some trouble uh, here in Chicago and just being in my neighborhood and kind of following the path of everyone around me. Um, and yeah, did some jail time. I got some charges. I, I was charged with a felony at the age of 18 mm. and, um, you know, had to deal with that. I, I married at 18 as well at the same time, um, a heroin addict and, you know, tried to help him. That didn't work out very well. And, uh, I had to change my life. So at 21, I was lost. I was broke. I was miserable. I was fat. I was just depressed. Um, I finally said, you know what, I want to go back to the gym. And I just, you know, I had seen like at this time, this is like Gina Carano is really big. There's a Tara La Rosa coming up. Yep. And and I, they just changed the name of MMA from No Holds Bar, yep. Barred NHB to MMA. And so, um, yeah, I was, I was like, wow, there's women doing this. Cause uh, when I was young, there was not very many women. I mean, in a tournament in a, in the Gracie Naga tournament at that time, there was three women that were in my bracket. Um, and so I went back and I, at first I did it just to lose weight and to try to figure out what to do with my life. I knew that I didn't want to live and be this negative person or this statistic and, and grow up in this environment. I wanted better. Um, I wanted the, my, my future, you know, for my family, for my nieces to be better. And so I walked into a gym at 21 and I have not looked back since, nice. um, just been training really hard and, and, and through MMA, through this sport, I have found discipline. I've found education. Um, I've found, you know, self healing and help and growth and geez, my life has changed 360 degrees completely. I think that's right. Um, completely from, from the sport, you know, and I, I do, I owe this sport my life because it has taught me so much, you know, nutrition and, and how to be disciplined and how to stay and, and create a goal and set a goal and, and focus 100% on that goal and fail like I just did this past weekend and get back up and continue to try and go forth, forward. So, um, yeah, that's my, my story. Um, I owe a lot to MMA. I, I owe a lot to fighting. Absolutely. Really well stated. And that is, uh, you know, a really good story and a testament to your determination uh, to really get yourself into a better situation on a couple of times in your life. And, uh, you know, and, and it really seems like you've done that. You know, we've had some questions from some of our viewers from from a couple of female viewers who are thinking maybe about being MMA fighters, I saw a good question where one asked, how would you know if you can handle it? I mean, I think that there, there's a lot of women that will, will never be fighters that feel that if they got punched in the face, they would cry. Obviously, yeah. right, if, you're, if that's where your head is into, in a strong way, you're never going to be a fighter. But when you start out, can there be some fear like that? for a woman to, to deal with and then to just overcome it? And if so, how is it overcome? Or do you have to have a mindset as a woman that you're just completely fearless right from the beginning when you embark upon uh, being a fighter? You know, I think it's just like riding a bike. You know, you're going to fall off. You're, you're going to bump. You're going to bump yourself up and get bruised up. The same thing with fighting. When the first time I got hit hurt so much more than, let's say, today. And you do get conditioned. To, to getting punched. Um, I think that you are right where you say that the sport isn't for all women. That doesn't mean that they can't continue, they can't train, they can't learn the arts. Um, this is self-discipline. This is um, also self-defense. Uh, you know, I can protect myself, but I can also um, discipline myself to be strong, to be courageous in those fearful moments. You know, I have fearful moments every day in the gym where I'm scared and, oh, you just, sometimes you just got to take that small risk and see. And so I would say the same thing for women that are considering doing this, try a boxing class, um, try a jujitsu class. And you know, if you fail, you're, you expect to fail, know you're going to fail because you are yeah. and, um, continue, you know, like I, I think that, uh, boxing and hitting pads and punching and learning the correct way to strike is so valuable and important to women to know even like, you know, how to throw a knee properly um, is very valuable. And in the jujitsu area, how to 
get someone that's mounting you off of you, um, how to reverse, do reversals, and even a submission. So if you have to, if you ever have to use this, you know, I think it's very valuable to learn it and give yourself some time. Nothing has, nothing was built overnight. Um, it doesn't happen overnight. So if, if you do it and you got hit and you didn't like it, but you're like, I did it and you're grateful, go back and try again, you know, give it a week, give it a month. Give it, give it a month of, of training and see if if you like it because it, it is, again, like riding a bike. It takes time and you learn as you go. Absolutely. Another question that I heard from a, a female friend of mine, um, you MMA fighters, men and women, are in amazing physical shape. For people that don't like MMA, you know, or don't, not that don't like it, that don't know about MMA, I'll say check out these athletes. They are some of the most physically fit, strong, with amazing core strength and conditioning, and just amazing, you know, overall physical shape both aesthetically and functionally um and and what about the people and let's say the women that say well if i to look like that i would have to never eat anything good all year and i can't do that now obviously it's it's a discipline that you have and the dieting is not fun or easy but Maybe you could give us a little bit of the insight onto that. I'm sure there are some points when you can eat some tasty stuff. And and how often is that? And and how often is it something that you could you could think about and you get used to when you have to be strict with your diet because the results are so important and, and, and are so uh, are so great when you do discipline yourself. You know, I think that for me, I have always had an emotional attachment to eating and food. And so uh, it was a challenge. Dieting has always been a challenge for me. And I've had to adapt a different mentality. And the way that I view food today is very different than what I did 10 years ago. For me as an athlete, as an elite level, level athlete, my body and my physical condition is extremely important because this is what I use as for my career, you know? And so when I fuel my body, I don't just look at food as, oh, this is gonna make me fat, or this is gonna make me, um, you know, not, I'm gonna be bloated. That's not the real reason what I'm, why I'm eating what I'm eating. When I eat my food, I'm eating it because it's nourishing my body. It's giving me the vitamins, the minerals that I need to go out and put my body through this extremely hard um, training day. And so, that was for me a big um, involvement when it came to my food, if, if you want to say. I evolved once I started looking at my food as a source of energy, as a source of nutrition and nourishment compared to just, oh, fat and calories. You know, I eat healthy fats because they're good for my brain so that I can function better and I'm sharper. Um, I eat protein to feed my muscles. And so looking at, at food in that way as an energy source, um, more than just how I'm going to look in the superficial part of dieting, um, really helped me to uh, stick to my diet and become more disciplined and also enjoy and appreciate the uh, nutrition and that I that I'm putting into my body. And I do love I love pizza. I've had pizza this week. I went to the the gas station on my way home and I I picked out every single gas station snack you can imagine. Nice. I had it. I ate it. And I don't ever do that. I don't I don't eat candy. I don't you know, that's just not something that I really enjoy. I love chocolate. So I get a dark cacao chocolate that has nutritional benefits in it for nice. me. Nice. Um, and so that's the way that, cause I am a sweet person. I like sweets. I'm not a big like salty and chips and soda. Those aren't my things. It's more like cake or chocolate. Um, those are my big go-tos and cheats. And I allow myself every single day to have a, a good piece of chocolate, a dark piece of chocolate every single day. Nice. Um, I give myself that for all of the hard work that I've put in. Um, and then once a week, I'll have a cheat meal and I'll enjoy whatever it is I'd like. Um, if it's a burger and then it's a milkshake at the end or, you know, anything crazy. I give myself one meal and it's usually a Saturday night. Um, so that Sunday, because I don't like to eat like that before a training day because it slows me down. I right. feel my stomach's upset. Like then I'm now I'm like my training's being um, 
what's the word? I can't even think modified because of how I feel and because of what I ate. So I look at my diet in that way as more of fuel and, and sources of nutrition, uh, nutrition and vitamins rather than just like, um, whether I'm going to be fat or skinny. Makes sense. And, and everything in moderation, as they say, especially yes. when you're a professional athlete. Another question, I know you mentioned Naga North American grappling association. So I know, you know, you're grappling. Um, I, I just train not as a professional, but, uh, you know, for fun and have competed in some small tournaments, intra school and a couple out of schools, uh, at the purple yes. belt level. So I love it myself. Why is it that with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and grappling being such great self-defense for women, why is it so hard for schools to get women to jump into the grappling classes? And part of it, I think, is a lot of women may look and see maybe one girl and six guys there or maybe six guys there and no girls and say, the last thing I want to do is be able to jump in there and have all these guys lay on top of me. What can be done to kind of break that image so that, you know, women can start to get in there and learn some of this really good grappling, which is, you know, probably the best self-defense against, you know, yes. personal assault or sexual assault, you know, for women. What advice could you give on that? So I think that uh, jiu-jitsu is a very physical sport. You know, you have to. It's not just using your hands or just your feet. You have to learn how to use your chest and put chest pressure on people and learn how to sink your hips down low and learn how to wrap your legs around people. It's a very physical sport. And I can see that being intimidating to some women who may naturally already be intimidated by, you know, by being physical period. Um, and men being that close, it's a very personal, you're, you're in someone's personal space, you're sharing personal space in grappling. And so I can see that women being a little hesitant and unsure of that. I would say, take it slow. Uh, the best thing about jujitsu is it's drilling and you can just practice a move um, and so that way you kind of slowly work your way into learning how to use your body and, and being strong um, in ways that you're, you would naturally be strong or allowing for someone to get very close to you and put you in positions that may make you feel uncomfortable. So when you're starting out with just the drilling, you can kind of learn and feel the motions, learn how to use your body because it's all about, you know, body control um, and learning how to use different muscles. Um, and also like slowly allowing for people in your personal space, a, it's a very private space and, and, you know, it's trust. Yep. And so I think that practicing that, giving yourself some time, you know, it takes some time to get comfortable. It's natural to feel uncomfortable. Um, and, and slowly kind of gradually work into where you can start rolling live. Um, I'm very fortunate. I train at 10 planet San Diego and we have 30 women in a class some nights. Like, it's amazing how many women grapplers there are nice. um, today. And I'm very fortunate to work with a lot of them. And I see that. I see the um, evol them evolving when they first come in very timid and shy to three months or four months later. They're rolling, and you can see them, like, empowered and feeling strong. So it's, it's a process allow yourself that time, be patient, and, and take baby steps. Absolutely. Great advice, Pearl. I really appreciate that. Well, I know you were kind enough to agree to jump into our very popular pros pick segment. And so why don't we get ready to jump into that? And we've got a few upcoming fights that I'd love to get your opinion on. Okay. All right. And the first one, uh, for full disclosure, is going to be one of Pearl's teammates over there at 10th Planet, uh, Team Hurricane Awesome over there in San Diego. And we're talking about the awesome girl, Rilla Liz Carmouche. Uh, and I think only maybe her second flyweight fight, uh, either second or third, uh, against uh, Lucy Pudlova. How do, and I know you're probably for sure cheering for your buddy, but I sh I'm sure also you can be objective in breaking down what you think we're going to be looking at in that matchup. And, uh, and then if you want, uh, how you think uh, Liz uh, wins. So Lucy, I love Lucy. She's messaged me several times and reached out to me on Twitter. Um, it's just a sweetheart, very sweet and supportive, um, athlete. So I was, I was kind of sad to see, see the matchup. You know, I'm, I'm obviously a very biased. I, my big sister Liz and I'm excited for Liz, but I was, I was a little sad at first to see this matchup. Um, I think Lucy has a very good striking game and she comes forward. She puts a lot of press. She's not scared to get in there and just, you know, go hard. And I think that, um, 
you know, that's dangerous for anyone, you know, um, and, and scary for anyone. And so uh, Liz has to be very um, disciplined in this fight. And uh, man, so I, Liz and I had our training camp together, obviously, um, for the for our, for these fights. And so Liz is, I just let me tell you, she's on another level. I've been training with Liz for about five, six years now. I have never seen her. Uh, I don't know what the word is. It's not committed, but just committed focused and everything right focus like this is her first time where she's uh she's one of the owners in our in in our gym and so you know she's always kind of had to work the desk work the business aspect of the gym as well as do her fight camps and this is her first fight camp where she is committed 100 percent to being a fighter and um she's just been you know so dedicated and just her speed and her power to me she is at her best that I've I've ever seen her in the last five years so I am really excited for her to showcase what she's worked so hard worked harder than I've seen her before and so I'm just so excited for her to showcase some of her new skills you know I think she's reached some new levels athletically and she's already a naturally gifted athletic athlete mm -hmm. and so um you know, to showcase that and to show the world her hard work. Um, if I were to take a guess on how this fight will end, I think it's going to end on the ground. And I think that Liz is going to show off how, why she just got that brand shiny new black belt from 10th Planet. Very impressive. I appreciate that analysis. And congrats on Liz for getting a black belt from 10th Planet. That is not easy to give. That's not given out in uh, cereal boxes, uh, as the old no. saying goes. Yeah. You know, I, I almost wish she could with her skills now in grappling have had that ronda rousey fight now where she could have maybe flattened her out and clamped on that face crank even harder mm -hmm. you know i agree you know right because I, I think ronda would have tapped i think if blood would have started to pour out ronda's nose and she would have started feeling her you know her jaw uh dislocating there would have been a tap out coming from that so but still that was an amazing fight liz uh Carmouche being part of the very first uh women's uh fight and giving ronda rousey a hell of a scare when ronda was in prime <laughs> so yeah i give liz a lot of credit at 125 she is truly the girl rilla look forward to a great win on the part of liz Carmouche. uh next one how about uh how about marion renault against yana kunitskaya at uh, at bantamweight that's an interesting matchup that is such an interesting matchup. Marion is a very well-rounded fighter. Um, I think that she's got some really good striking and, and very knowledgeable and aware in the grappling area. Um, and, and also, I think that she also does a great job of keeping a good pace for herself and, and is, uh, you know, just very aware of where the fight is and what's going on. Um, I can't even see her name. We're going to have to say her Yana, name for me again. Yana Kunitskaya. Yana. Yana is, oh, my God, I love her. She's such a risky fighter. Like, she's risky. She'll take risks. She's young. She also, I believe it was her last fight, she showcased a really good tie clinch to me and um, had a really good over-under. And I didn't consider her to be a good grappler. So there's, there's obvious... Lisa, a lot of improvement in her grappling. If I'm going to have to pick one, I'm going to have to pick Yana. I think she's um, the younger fighter, and she's also a little more risky, and I've also seen her evolve pretty quickly. Absolutely, and I like Yana Kuniskaya. She's been on our show twice with an in-depth interview uh, from Jackson Wink, where she trains in Albuquerque, as well as we interviewed her live when she uh, beat uh, uh, Raquel Pa'aluhi for uh, that Invicta Bantamweight title. And she is a really nice woman, really cool, really humble, really friendly. And uh, definitely, I think she's training really hard over there with the likes of, of John Jones and other people like that. And uh, so, yeah, I think that Yana will win that fight. Although inspiration, uh, kudos to uh, uh, Marianne Renault for being 40, possibly even 41. Oh my gosh. Yep, in this sport. So it kind of shows maybe that the women can start having some Dan Hendersons and uh, Randy Couture's uh, possibly, which would be great, because then you'd have a long shelf life left if, uh, <laughs> if that was happening. So I think you will. And I think that, uh, that yeah, Marion's going to fight tough, but I think Yana will be too big, too strong, too determined, too young for her. I agree. And then here's a, a very interesting one. This is the last one we'll go over. Alexis Davis, the Canadian, 
going up against Jennifer Maya, the Brazilian, the former Invicta champ. What do you think there? And I guess this is at 25, so this I think is yeah. going to be either the first or second fight at 25 for Alexis Davis. It's her second fight. She fought Liz at, uh, at flyweight. Right. Um, and I thought that she looked strong. She looked strong at 25 uh, and looked great, was in just phenomenal shape, uh, Alexis Davis was. And so I'm excited to see her at 25. I had the opportunity of training with Alexis a couple months back when I went and worked up worked out with uh, CSA for a few days. Liz and I uh, went out there, and um, she's amazing. It was such an honor to work with her, and I was just so impressed with her grappling oh, yeah. and her. She's just <clears throat> really not regular. just amazing on the on her back, but on the top. Like just had this felt like she was like 500 pounds. Just had the solid base yeah. to her, um, as well as again, she's another crafty veteran. She's aware of where the fight is at all times. Can keep a good pace um, and and knows how to like edge out when when needed. So I think that Alexis Davis is going to take this. I cannot take anything away from Jennifer Maya. She is an amazing athlete. Has phenomenal Muay Thai skills um i think she does pretty good on her back and, and in the grappling area uh but i think that the key to this fight would be to take to take uh, maya down and and to work her there either not either in control if not end up with a submission and i think alexis davis will get the job done i think so too alexis davis is such a, a crafty veteran such a strong girl as you just illustrated so hard-nosed and gritty and, and just an, an amazing grinder and someone who's just a, a really rugged uh, individual. I think she does it too. Jennifer Maya is used to winning and is really tricky and really crafty, but I think, yeah, especially if it gets to the ground, Alexis uh, can do it. Now, you, you know how many people hear a name and start saying this person is that person's sister? Uh, I had someone come over to me and say, yeah, she's Damian Maya's sister. And I said, I believe 99% she is not. And am I right? I think I'm right. She's not. I don't think she is. Right, I didn't I think don't. so either, right? Just because of the name. Because then there's that also that referee, Osiris Maya. And I don't think he's related to either of them. Well, I think Maya <laughs> is not that unusual a name probably in uh, in Brazil. So, you know, but yeah, I think that, uh, that yeah, that should be a really interesting fight. And I think that Alexis wins. But there'll be some some great fights coming up. And uh, and also the March 2nd card is going to be a lot of fun. That's And, and Liz, Liz's fight is on that March 2nd card, I think, right? No, she's fighting this weekend, the 23rd. That's right. That's right. So look out for Liz this weekend. I hope everyone knows yes. that just because that March 2nd fight card is so big, don't forget that there's a great fight card coming up uh, this weekend, and Liz Carmouche is on it against Lucy Pudlova and much more. So in the last minute or so we have from your Pearl, if there's anything else you wanted to shout out, if you wanted to shout out your gym or your sponsors, and then please shout out the best way to get in touch with you on social media. Absolutely, man. I got to give a big shout out to my team, my 10th Planet Freaks. Uh, I would not be here without you guys. Uh, we came up short, but that does not mean this race is over. It's not done yet. It was just a slight bump. So big thank you and shout out to 10th Planet Freaks. Big shout out to my sponsors, For Life, uh, San Diego, Black River San Diego Tattoo, Wolf of Madison here in Chicago, Junior's Bar, Output Bar and Lounge. Um, thank you so much to my team, Team Gonzalez. Um, I have these phenomenal calendars, 2019, with like some of the hottest pictures I've ever taken in this calendar. I put a lot of hard work into this. So make sure you guys go and grab a calendar. Um, they have some beautiful, like I put motivational quotes in there because that's that's what I'm all about is just constantly, I'm driven, I'm focused on being better. So pick up your calendar. You can go to pearlgonzalez.com for that and grab one of those. Um, and you can find me anywhere and everywhere at Pearl Gonzalez. Excellent. And I just detected a little bit of your Chicago accent when you said some of those last few words. I love it. <laughs> I'm from Michigan. Gotta love the Midwest. Chicago has the coolest accent. I got, you know, I gotta say. So really love to hear that. It reminds me of, uh, of being back home. And it's always great to talk to a, uh, a fantastic uh, and super nice Midwest woman. Yes, thank you. Likewise. Thank you so much. It was an honor to talk with you and a pleasure. Thank you so much. The same here. I really appreciate it a lot, Pearl. I'll be cheering for you. Hope to see that rematch signed soon. In the meantime, keep up the great work. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
And that was Pearl Gonzalez, super cool Midwest woman. Dr. Adam yeah. Rota, we either pressed the wrong button or was there something you wanted to add or did you want me to bring it? Oh, yeah, in? no, I, <laughs> I didn't think I, 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 I was switching out the title bars and her name was our next guest for uh, about two minutes, I think. I got you. I thought you were reacting <laughs> yeah, to something, like, but I couldn't tell what it was. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I was going to say, did you want to interject something, Dr. Uh, Adam Rota? And our, then our next guest is, uh, you saw it on the screen. I'm, I'm super stoked for him. But yeah, Pearl is... is uh, really Really nice woman. Uh, a really nice genuine woman and, and genuine and, and has a great story and, and just she's one of the toughest fighters out there. Yeah. She really is. Yeah. Um, just a good person. And, you know, I think yeah, she'll I, be back. I, I, she'll be back. She didn't do that bad in that fight. And she no, even, she, did, she did well. It's yeah. just an unfortunate eye poke. It happens yeah. occasionally where you're not yeah. intentionally doing it. And, and, it I like the, and I like the fact, sorry, I like the fact that in less than a week, she's already found some of the flaws in her strategy that she can improve on with this particular opponent and Absolutely. and you know and and you know what's her name did look massive uh portal like i said i'm not trying to cast any aspersions on her and i've long kind of for a good while been a Porto fan but she did look massive us if whatever she did i mean if she didn't cheat then if she's not power cheating, to her yeah, she's then, doing then, it right yeah and and pearl did take the high road saying she's obviously doing something right pearl didn't cast any anything on, on on Porto except for saying she does something right she's big she's huge she's strong I was the one that said you know she really like really big huge and strong so anyway no offense and uh, she may be 100% clean but just she's got that weight cutting down um, the one I'm still a little bit concerned about is Paulo Costa at uh, in the UFC uh, uh, middleweight division so I don't know Israel Adesanya is already calling him a steroid monkey so uh, <laughs> I don't know but what do you guys think well actually we only got about another uh, we only got a few minutes I yeah, got about five minutes yeah. real quick though I want to give everybody a shout out for tuning in I, I thank you guys so much for that uh, make sure to give us a like a comment and share if this is your first time uh, definitely leave a comment let us know that you tuned in for the first time tonight uh, we Colin and I like to interact after the show and as much during the show as we can. So leave us some comments. We, we have somebody here who's got a question up here. It's been sitting there for a while, but uh, it, we're not answering it yet because it's going to be part of our next segment. Yes. And we will go ahead and let you know then. But make sure to give us a like, a comment, and a share. And when I say give us a like, make sure to like our page and the video. Uh, it really helps us out. Sharing really helps us out. Uh, we can't get the word out there without uh, spending thousands upon thousands of dollars every week uh, if you guys aren't helping us share. And, and it's one of the most... Uh, awesome things that you can do sharing for us. is caring sharing is say, caring right? uh it, we we really cannot do it without you guys appreciate the help so much it means the world to us absolutely uh, another quick shout out to uh combat press uh go to combatpress.com where every fight has a story uh this is my go-to source for all combat press related news i highly recommend it is yours in the future go to combatpress.com you won't be disappointed. Nope. So uh, are we wanting to uh, pass another couple of minutes by uh, gabbing a little bit more? Or do we want to, well, or do I think we, maybe another minute? Yeah, let's give it another minute All right, or two. So the other fight, uh, 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 Tyron Woodley against Kamaru Usman. You have two amazing wrestlers. Both, I think, were at least two-time NCAA All-American. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Uh, high, high, high-level fighters. Usman has a little bit of the reach on Woodley and is a little bit younger. Woodley, on the flip side, is known to have definitely a harder punch and and much more experienced. Um, we had Tyron Woodley on the show about a year and a half ago. I think we still have it up uh, in our MMA uh Power Hour Super Sessions, a really good interview uh, with him and uh, fighting legend uh, Antonio McKee. I'm leaning toward Tyron. He was a very, very cool guy. He gave us about 40 minutes of his time, and he doesn't do that much, you know, interviews or media. That was really early on in our show, helped give us a good boost that we needed. And so I, I'm, I'm staying loyal to Tyron. I think he takes this, uh, but Usman is a dangerous, dangerous guy. What's your prediction real quick, Adam, and what happens when you have two elite-level wrestlers? Is this going to become somewhat of a crappy striking match only, or, or what do you think? Uh, w with Tyron, I mean, he always plays it safe and smart. Uh, I, I, I don't see this being a super exciting fight. Um, I mean, exciting for somebody that, that likes the finer details and defense and, and strategic fighting. I, I enjoy that, but I, I just know what a lot of people end up saying. Uh, listen, Tyron, I think is going to 
turn around and be kind of like a, a Mayweather later on. So I, I mean, my, my my prediction is he's 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 going to win, but he's he's very defensive, and uh, it, it wins him his fights. I I think he's going to win the same way with Usman. He's won a majority of his fights up to this point. Just maybe kind of outgrapple him and keep pecking him apart. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so, but so. he could t- if he lands though, he could knock Usman out. You well, that, and that's that. what I'm saying. He, I think later on down the road, he's going to kind of have that same type of vibe to him that, you know, you look back on, on Mayweather, there was a time where I'm just kind of like, okay. Yeah, a lot of people don't like just because of the fact he doesn't really engage. Yeah. I don't know. Well, you could be right, and, and a lot of people would agree. I hope that's not the case. I think I think he may knock Usman out. Either that or Usman out-wrestles him, and, and that would be really, really interesting. It's interesting, too, that Tyron and his good friend Ben Askren are on this card together. The very first uh, uh, fight for uh, Ben Askren He's on the card with his good friend, longtime uh, fellow Missouri Tiger, and uh, and training partner, and uh, and so obviously they're training together for this camp, which is freaking awesome. I think they're both going to be super sharp. Um, would be would be, and you know the funny thing is, I just realized it. Uh, Woodley's uh, Woodley fought Askren's opponent and knocked him out in about a minute and a half to win his title about three and a half or four years ago. So I'm sure he's giving uh, Askren a little bit of information about the, about the Lawler, not that Askren can't find it on his own, but I don't think he can give Askren his big, you know, overhand, right? Super punch, uh, you know, just, uh, just, uh, by uh, osmosis or, or mentally sending it over to Askren because Askren doesn't have that. But it's going to be interesting. But really interesting they're both on the card. Anyway, um, whenever Dr. Adam Rorta is going to get that going, we'll be we'll be getting our next guest on and super excited to have him, but also super excited to, to talk to you all and, uh, and some great fights uh, coming up here. But looks like we're doing a little Skype dance there. Is that it? Or that's only a... All right. All so right. send a, a message yeah. to that phone number, Colin. Yeah, uh, we'll do. Let him know to hop on Skype real quick. Yes. All right. Yeah. So before the show, uh, we we organized this, and actually we had a different time, and it was my mistake with the miscommunication. Uh, but we uh, rearranged it and should have him on here. We got a little message we've got to send out so uh real quick just want to say thank you again to digi south uh we're all ready for Jeremy. for all you we that need Skype, social media no marketing answer. go ahead and swing uh, on over to digisouth.co uh and, and inquire send us an again. email over there send them an email over there you can send me an email uh, or call in uh or a message via Facebook, and we can get you in touch with the appropriate people over there to help you out with your social media marketing needs. Also, they are the best at Digi South, Digi uh, Digital South Pod, Digi South, and whatever else. Brett, they are truly amazing and great people. Continue with your thought. <laughs> also, again, another another thought into the universe about. Combat Press. I mean, seriously, I, I've been going there and checking them out, and, and this isn't even uh, a live read at this point. I, I just see they have all the no fluff stories. For, so everybody that's looking to get into MMA that isn't already, uh, it, it's a great place to start. Start knowing your stats. Uh, you don't necessarily get all of the information that's that's full of fluff. Uh, so you're not getting the the crazy stories that have nothing to do with MMA. But uh, you're getting anything you want to do with combat sports in general not just mixed martial arts but kickboxing right. their rankings you get to keep up with that uh muay thai uh anything that you can imagine jiu-jitsu yeah. you know uh all all the combat sports there are boxing even they cover it they're really one of the best <laughs> all right we're getting some communique from uh from uh the uh spouse of jeremy stevens here it looks like and uh but Perfect. it's those dots sometimes those dots keep on uh continuing you're saying someone's typing something but hopefully (laughs) the dots yeah the dots are going you know and uh it will be uh you know it will be continuing soon uh scott we will answer that question with this great interview with jeremy about his next fight a lot of you i think probably and and it'll be the the right jeremy stevens it won't be pearl gonzalez (laughs) right well i think yeah i apologize pearl for that i i was setting stuff up and i actually meant to take your your name off the screen for the last couple minutes and also to our our next guest coming up here uh but uh It happens. Graphics. Things can happen with the graphics. You know, once in a blue moon. Okay, so uh, we're waiting for that message. It's funny how the dots the dots then go away, and you think someone decided maybe not to uh, to write you. Oh, are they calling no, us? No. No, you're going to try. I'm trying here. Okay, because it looks like they went to type us something, and nothing came through. 
All right. Well, you know, this does happen. Wait, time. okay. I had messaged you on Facebook. Oh, come on. Oh, no. We got a no no. I mean, I, can you do the honors here, Doctor? Ah, uh, okay. So here's a message from Jeremy's wife, and this was confirmed uh, a week ago, and it was reconfirmed today that we had Jeremy Stevens on. All respect to him, not trying to act like that. But he, here's the he offered to got. do something, and, and I think we'll figure it out and get it, get it going here. So on, on Friday, everybody that was tuning in uh, to check out Jeremy, uh, he will be coming on Friday. Un he apologizes profusely uh, because his coach actually is making him go ahead and, and put in the, the work tonight that he thought he was going to be able to get it off but uh they do want to make it up so we're going to do a pre-recorded uh uh interview we'll get that out to you later this week uh listen it, it happens and we'll we'll get something out to you boys and girls i i think there's a lot of fights coming up here that we can go over though colin in the meantime so well you know what why don't we see uh if we can get our next guest early and, and we he, he why, can go why don't you shoot it. him a message see, yeah, see let what me, we can let me do. check and see i really apologize guys it is what it is all respected jeremy stevens really frustrated though because he they absolutely confirmed and then reconfirmed they would be here tonight stuff happens though and still all respect to him and hopefully we can arrange to 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 do that on friday um let me see if we can get our next guest uh uh is there any way you could be ready in uh in a couple minutes brother question mark i you know if, if not that's all right yeah if not then we'll we'll go break down other stuff but you know i apologize as just you know my neck from this freaking pinched nerve and uh slip disc is killing me you may have noticed and uh it's been a tough uh tough day and you know just trying to keep it going here <laughs> not, not it's not anyone's problem and i and i i'm gonna try to relax and stop fidgeting but man how long does it take for a freaking pinched nerve and herniated disc to go away on its own i guess a while uh, uh even forever some, yeah right. even with some body work you know six to and, ten weeks yeah it's already been six so maybe within a few more but i have a feeling we'll be getting our next guest on here uh, any minute and uh, and let's see if he responds here um other otherwise so this last fight card uh, uh, we had Cain Velasquez Jeremy Stevens had a tough loss against Aljermaine Sterling he he fought tough uh, Sterling just you know fought a little bit better really good fight though Jimmy will be back and Alger you know and and looked impressive Aljermaine still uh, impressive himself um, uh, who else was there uh, Paul Felder against uh james vick the irish dragon paul felder uh really really looking great in there when really emotional afterward uh james vick fighting very very tough as well a really good matchup of two uh serious top 10 contenders uh fight of the night vincente or vicente yeah, vicente or vicente luque who is on a tear of I think five wins in a row or six uh, going up against uh, Brian Bam Bam Barbarina. I think it's Bam Bam fight of the night, possibly even fight of the year, although the year is only six weeks in, but one of the best fights in quite a while. If you guys didn't see that, man, oh man, oh man, oh man. I was on the phone during half of that fight, but thankfully I DVR'd it. Man, they beat the crap out of each other what an amazing amazing fight the victory uh by sub i think or by stoppage in the end of the third round going to Vic vicente luque but what an amazing amazing fight hats off to brian barbarina for being so tough he was like a five to one underdog and fought almost as if he was uh you know uh an even money bet and uh, luke what a tear the guy is amazing um okay cool uh i think our guy can be ready uh we'll skype you in about a minute and a half period so that means any moment yep do, 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 do. So in the meantime, uh, yeah, some great <laughs> we'll fights go right coming up. The Skype dance yeah, here, let's see if we can get uh, Colby in here. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I might be beating him to the punch. You might, because I just told him a minute and a half about twenty seconds ago. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm, I'm moving like a jackrabbit right now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we're gonna get uh, Colby, a really hot prospect, a man who trains regularly with John Bones Jones at the Jackson Wink Academy in Albuquerque. Will be joining us, talking about himself, but also really going over a bunch of upcoming fights and breaking them down. So we're gonna get an opinion of an active pro fighter. He just won his last fight in 54 seconds, and uh, when you're training regularly with John Bones Jones. 
iron sharpens iron uh uh jackson wink is working on becoming uh or re you know returning to uh the top of the sport as they were several years ago and they're great people there they haven't had a lot of wins lately but they've had some and uh and i think colby is absolutely for real and uh you know, I'm sure John Jones would agree with that, and we're going to get a chance to pick his brain on some big upcoming fights. So anyone really wants some insight as to what's going to happen, anybody gambling, although bet responsibly or anything else, get some ready for some really good entertaining conversation and a really, really hot prospect, former football player. A lot of these guys are super, super exciting because they're they're more athletic than most of the big men, uh, even at 205 at light heavyweight. So hopefully we can uh, hit him up. I think he's ready now. And so you want to get that moving. Uh, we'll hear that great Skype tone, and I'm going to try to get ready for a great interview here uh, nope nope uh, it's not gonna end it. let me try something else okay so you want to have him skype us i mean that's probably gonna be the option to right. go with could you skype us brother that would help question mark wait uh could you skype us colby i think that might do it we're having some problems skyping you period do, 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 do. Okay, we're gonna get we're getting back on track here. Throw it for a, for a loop. I mean, I, I'm sure you guys understand. I mean, I, I you know I'm hurting here, tired, exhausted. Adam's been running around for like a two hours sleep for like three days, and we were all prepared for an interview that was gonna flow with Jeremy Stevens, who guaranteed and committed he was gonna be here. And all of a sudden, when he can, it just we kind of took us through us for a loss. Like I said, all respect to Jeremy, it just kind of threw us a little bit <laughs> for a lot. It's almost like if you know uh, you know. What do you call him? The tonight show. I mean, he's, he's going to have he's the biggest guest in training this. camp right now, and coach says no. Yeah, that means no. So I mean, we we definitely yeah. understand. Yeah, it's, it's just like whoop. Ooh, yeah, okay, gonna, change gears. Yeah, and I'm not trying to apply. <laughs> otherwise, I'm not. I'm looking forward to talking to him. It just kind of threw me personally for a loop, especially with being <laughs> tired and in pain. I was going to, you know, go with this uh, good interview with Jeremy, and, and then we're now having to fill time for uh, a few minutes. But Colby's going to help us out if we can just get the Skype going. And so, what does he say? He says, "Let me try." All right, cool. We're waiting here for you. As soon as you can Skype us, that would be great. I appreciate it, brother. Exclamation point. No, it's not. Uh, they try to dictate, but it helps if I press the button first, doesn't it? <laughs> awesome. How many times is it going to repeat the yeah, same thing? Yeah, please, please uh, <laughs> Skype us as uh, soon as you can, brother. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Say hey, something, Dr. Adam. Guys, Florida. this is not a broken record with Colin. There we go. Awesome. Colby, is that you? There he is right there. Thank you so much for coming through in a pinch. Colby Landers, let me give you a proper introduction. This man is a hot prospect out of the great Jackson Wink Academy. He trains with some of the best people in the world, including John Bones Jones. Uh, we are talking about none other than Mr. Colby Landers. Welcome to the show, Colby. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. My pleasure. My pleasure, brother. And everything looks good on the Skype. We're good to go. So tell us a little bit about yourself, man. You've had a few uh, MMA fights, but tell us how many pro fights you have and, uh, and remind us what happened in this last fight and uh, and how it went down and, and where it was. Uh, yeah, I've had um, I've had two pro fights so far. Um, blessed to be 2-0. and um, I had a couple amateur fights. Uh, I had a lot of trouble finding fights, to be honest, um, probably because of who I train with, um, my coaches, my team. Uh, I played college football in the SEC at Ole Miss, so uh, being a former college football player probably doesn't help the situation. People probably aren't beating down the door to um, fight us Ole Miss guys. You know, we seem to be able to throw down pretty good. Um, but yeah, so my. Uh, Two pro fights so far. My first one, uh, my original opponent was supposed to be the guy I fought second. He pulled out uh, for some reasons that he really couldn't help. So I understand those things happen, but um, Rashid Jones, uh, he stepped in. Uh, he's a former Bellator heavyweight. So for my first fight of my pro career, that's a pretty tough, pretty tough go for me considering I'm a light heavyweight. So I had to meet him at heavyweight. Uh, fortunately, I got the win. Um, had to get a few stitches in my eye and had a fractured orbital, but you know, I proved a lot to myself in that fight because I usually don't take damage. So I proved that I have a chin if I need it, which I don't want to test it too much. Um, that fight went well, um, turned around, fought, you know, last weekend, uh, got the win over Josh Pierce, um, you know, 52 second uh, knockout. 
um, I was able to be a lot more uh, professional, you could say, uh, pick my shots a lot better. And uh, I was a lot more calm and made it, you know, technique instead of just a brawl like my first fight so i was i was happy about that excellent was that a knockout uh tko on the feet or from ground and pound on the ground uh i hit him and stunned him and then i you know kind of old school v tour just you know once i saw him hurt i just pounced on him and you know it was just a matter of time so they had to call it excellent and do you feel really good uh, about your hands i mean what was your what was your athletic background other than football uh did you get into all combat sports all at one time at jackson wink where you're, you're you have just as much time under your belt in striking as you do in wrestling as you do in jujitsu or did you have a background or start doing one of them first um i i'm just you know like most fall players we're just pretty good athletes so uh you got a pretty good palette to paint on there um obviously you're tough if you play in sec but uh yeah i mean i had uh i started with boxing and uh boxed a little bit uh that kind of helped me with the jitters and you know the fatigue of an actual fight as opposed to sparring uh i did that then i did um a few uh nogi tournaments naga agf ended up winning those and then uh, I took my first amateur fight then. But yes, I went to Jackson Wink. Uh, I also trained at Rock City MMA uh, here at my hometown, Little Rock, Arkansas. So, uh, but when I did go to Jackson Wink, they were actually happy that I haven't formed a lot of bad habits, um, you know, that they had to change. So they could pretty much just teach me what they wanted me to do from the ground up instead of having to break bad habits and teach me new good habits. So. That was one good thing they liked about it. I mean, uh, I'm a black belt in Taekwondo, but as far as actual combat, uh, no, I just uh, I just jumped head first into it. Sounds good. And you fight at 205 for this second fight. Your first fight was heavyweight, but I think 205 is indeed your focus. Is that right? Absolutely, yes. Um, I don't want any of the, those Francis and Gondos out there. I'm good on that. So I agree, uh, <laughs> I'm I not that big, man. I mean, I walk around it. Probably I'm like six three. I walk around about two thirty, but the cut for me is real easy. I mean, it's you know, it, I'm just not that big of a person. You know, I lift weights. You know, so I, I I put some muscle on. But as far as frame goes, those guys are just overall bigger. They're just I'm not I'm not I'm not in that weight class. That's not my that's not my deal there. That makes sense. So. Now playing football, you probably wanted to have more weight on, but it wasn't necessarily extremely functional weight for fighting. Or when you played, were you still 225, 230, 235? Uh no man, I was I was almost up 245, 250. Um, you know, you have to block defensive ends in college. They're probably six five, six six, six seven, three hundred pounds almost. Uh so you had to have a little weight on you. But you also had to be quick enough to, you know, pull on the outside, maybe block a cornerback or, you know, quick enough to, you know, meet a linebacker, you know, wherever you got to hit him at. So, yeah, I mean, it wasn't as functional and training MMA will actually, it'll just take the weight off of you. You'll find your natural weight class because when I started, I was like, oh, I guess I'll just be heavyweight. And then weight just starts falling off of you through the training process. So nice. kind of works out. Nice. And I think 205 is a good division. Speaking of 205, one of your uh, one of your training partners over there is John Bones Jones. What can you tell us as far as what kind of a guy he is uh, to his training partner and uh, and what it's like to train with him and what you've learned, If you, not to give away too many secrets, but whatever you can tell. Um, you know, unfortunately, I haven't been around uh, uh, to help him with this camp with uh, Anthony Smith. Um, I'm not really like Anthony Smith anyways, so he right. probably has some better people to show him that look. Um, he's always uh, he's always in the gym. He, it's it's not a uh, it's not a coincidence. He's as good as he is. He uh, he he trains hard. He trains three four times a day. Um, you know, he he's a great teammate as far as. Uh, you know, after he beats you up that round, he'll uh, he'll teach you the secrets and show you what you could have done. And uh, it's really good to be able to gauge yourself against pretty widely, you know, recognized as the best fighter ever live. I mean, throw everything aside. Let's just be honest, you know. Um, so being able to gauge yourself against him kind of lets you know where you might stand in the whole division, you know. So that's always great. And he's real um, he's real good to spar with because I mean. You know, if you don't block a head kick and it knocks you out, that's that's your fault. But as far as being a really 
technical sparring partner he's very under control and when you get with high level guys like that they're really under control you know it's like rolling in jiu-jitsu with a white belt they're real spazzy and you go with a black belt they're real smooth and they're not you know doing a bunch of crazy stuff so it's kind of like that yeah and that's cool and you, you guys have similar frame he's maybe an inch taller than you or something right yeah he's about an inch taller than me um his reach is obviously longer than everyone's um i've got a long reach i got a 79 inch reach and his is almost 85 inches so wow wow so yeah a little <laughs> bit different insane. but similar height and and general weight because i think he cuts i think he walks around around 230 ish or so too doesn't he yeah he's he's about 230 235 when he walks around yeah makes sense and do you, you know here's a question i haven't heard asked before when you're training if you're not cutting weight then you, you're kind of training at the your normal walking around weight uh, uh isn't that right or or, or if you're going to be training uh even in the early stages does the weight start coming off quick you know or, or do you find yourself sometimes training uh with people if you don't have a fight coming up weighing 230 or so or do you usually find that that weight starts coming off when you're training and you're not quite that heavy when you're when you're training even with people who have their fights coming up um it's not a i usually try to start my cut kind of far out so it's not as drastic but i try to make it kind of drastic in a way that way uh my body puts the weight back on quicker uh after weigh-ins so uh i usually try to go you know into that last week 220 you know uh and then cut that last you know 10 15 like the day before that way it's kind of a drastic cut that way my body's kind of starving dehydrated a little bit so that when i do hydrate and eat it sucks it all back on that way i can be bigger the next night um as far as training camp goes sometimes i'll be training so hard i'll have to eat just to stay around 225 230 you know while i'm not in my cut uh that way i just that's how i'm used to it so you know if i get above 230 too much i kind of get nervous i need to bring it back down if i get below 225 220 I, I i need to bring it back up so i need to hover around 225 when i'm training uh not cutting makes sense and as a, a college football player playing for old miss a, a great school and a great power um were there were there any interesting factors that that made you think about uh uh about mma now not, obviously not everyone's cut out for the mm for the nfl and mma is an exciting sport too where you can get you know fame and fortune and, and be high profile was there any background that you had that made you look to that was there anyone you knew that wanted you made you want to consider that were you just an mma fan even when you were younger uh and were there any football players who jumped into MMA that, that inspired you at all? Uh, well, actually, I've, I've always been a UFC fan. Uh, my brother, he would actually, uh, like, we would kind of, sorry, Mom, but we would kind of go to the movie store. He was older than me, so he would go rent, like, UFC 1 when it was, like, nice. kind of a, almost illegal to rent those. And, like, after my parents went to sleep, we'd, like, you know, watch it, and he would obviously beat me up and do all the moves he was seeing on there. <laughs> ah, nice. So, yeah, I was like his little uh, dummy, you know. Nice. So yeah, yeah, we. I've always been a fan of it, and then, uh, you know, it's obviously blown up over the years with the McGregor and all that stuff, which is good for the sport. Um, but one thing that I really started, you know, paying attention to was uh, there. There's a guy named Mike Wessel. He fought in the UFC and Bellator. He was a strength conditioning coach at the University of Arkansas, and his best friend was my strength coach at Ole Miss, Jason Wilfon, and uh, Mike kind of took, I wanted to be a strength coach uh, when I graduated. So I kind of looked up to Mike and kind of like watched his path and kept up with him. And he was a former football player, strength coach who turned MMA fighter, uh, just a big, powerful athlete. And I was like, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I kind of like that. I, I might try that one day, you know, I never really actually thought I would. Um, but, you know, after I graduated, got a few looks from Canada, I was like, no, nah, football's over. And then I just missed competing, so I started jumping into it. But, yeah, I'd probably say Mike. Uh, I, that's one of the main reasons I kept up with it through my coach, uh, Jason. He uh, he always was talking about Mike, so we were looking at, him, looking at him and stuff like that. Makes sense. Now, obviously, after you get on, on track as a pro and start making some money, it's not hard for family to support you. But during the early stages, I would find I would say that probably a good amount of people's family does not support them because they're not seeing money, but they are seeing danger. 
what does your family feel about this and your brother or if you have any siblings uh are they are they are they not wanting you to get beat up or smashed obviously but are they are they positive are they telling you that they're that they're going to be cheering for you or they're not or don't do it or 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 quit as soon as things get bad what kind of feedback uh, can you can you tell us you're getting from your family as much as you want to share uh, yeah, my, my parents are the best parents, you know, in the world. If, if I lived a hundred lifetimes, I'd pick them every time. Uh, they're the most, uh, supportive, uh, people in the world. I mean, I had a, a good thing lined out. My dad, he owns a successful construction company. You know, I worked for him during the summers and, you know, uh, I still, when I'm home, you know, work with him a little bit. And, uh, you know, I just came in one day, I was like, I think I want to, you know, get punched in the face for a living. And they were like, oh, okay, well, you know, give it hell, you know? So um, they always just, even if they didn't understand it, they always believed in me. And uh, my brother's the same way. He's my biggest fan. I'm his biggest fan. Uh, he's very intelligent. He's a physical therapist at D1 Sports. So we kind of have our own thing going. And, uh, you know, my family's just, they've always been supportive. And at the beginning, I think they were kind of confused. Um, you know, I was winning and, uh, you know, they were kind of like, oh, that's good. You know, and then when I turned pro and started making money, um, cause I do sell quite a few tickets when I fight. So I, you know, it's starting to, it's starting to show a little bit. And uh, I think now they see that, uh, I actually am pretty good at this and that I could actually, you know, make a pretty good living, you know, considering my teammates, I got quite a few teammates that are multimillionaires doing this. I think they finally understand that it's not just a hobby or, or, or you know, human, you know, cogfighting. It's actually a, a recognized sport on ESPN now, and people are making a real living doing it. So I think they kind of get it now. So absolutely absolutely uh, one of our tech people was concerned something was going on so i just had to kind of shake my head it's all good it's all good so anyone noticing me shaking my head this wasn't regarding what uh colby was just saying but, one of our tech, yeah. but yeah i'm glad to hear that man and uh and you're you're originally an arkansas boy and uh, you went to to old miss so anyone from arkansas or mississippi you know you got to cheer for colby and throw him some support and you know people from the south over there and so were you born and raised over there in arkansas i think you were right yeah, I'm uh, born and raised here in uh, Bryant, Arkansas. It's it's right outside Little Rock. So when people ask, you know, sometimes you just have to say Little Rock. So, yeah, born and raised here. Very cool. Well, I look forward to some great things from you. Well, Colby was kind enough to agree to jump into our pros pick segment. And uh, Colby is a longtime fan, having mentioned that his brother would go and rent the UFC 1 uh, DVD back in the day and so uh, we're really happy to have him on here as part of the Jackson Wink team as part you know part of a man who trains uh, with John Jones albeit not in this camp for Smith uh, but in past camps uh, I love to hear what he has to say and so um, let me check with our tech guys to make sure are we ready for me to jump into that yep we are okay and so Colby why don't we start here with another former football player and I bet you're going to know where this guy played. I think, was it Alabama? No, it wasn't. Where did OSP play? Do you remember? OSP played at the University of Tennessee. I think I uh, actually played against him. Oh, you're he's kidding a, me. <laughs> he's a little bit older. He's a year or two older than me, but yeah, he was there. Nice. Well, OSP is going against Misha Serkinov. Love to hear the Colby Landers breakdown. Anything that, that might be interesting to our fans, you know, in your opinion, because uh, this is your division with a former football player in it. And I love to hear some of the interesting things that you feel we should look out for um, in this fight and how you think, you know, either one or two ways that this may unfold and then a winner in prediction if you have one. Okay, I actually I actually heard OSP uh, had to pull out, I think. Have you heard about that? I haven't, that would be very unfortunate. Man, yeah, if that's I the case, yeah, okay. So if that's the case, why don't we skip that one? Except for who would you who, who would you have predicted had he not had to pull out? Uh, you know what? Uh, I always got to go with my guy OSP. You know, it's it's SEC's kind of a family thing, and I'm kind of biased with him. Um, lately, he's just I don't know if he's just uh, I don't know. Lately, he just doesn't seem like he he really cares as much. I don't know. It's weird, kind of hard to put a finger on it. Uh, I would like to see him win. Um, you know, I'm gonna have to go with him. I, I you know, respect the Serkinov too. Uh, he's big, powerful, good on the ground. 
uh, I just got to go with my boy, OSB. Sounds good. And that's if that fight happens, which it seems like it may not. Okay. How about... Uh, how about this one? Jeremy Stevens, who was scheduled to come in, and he had a, something urgent come up that he couldn't get away from training. He had confirmed, and he said he'll do a special interview with us here on Friday to make up for it. Uh, and so uh, we're going to do that. But Jeremy Stevens against Zabit Megamed Sharapov. In interesting fight. Love to hear the Colby Landers breakdown on that very key featherweight uh, top 10 contender fight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know Zabit's the the big thing now, and everybody's kind of on uh, the Zabit hype train, I guess if you want to call it that. Um, you know, I I like Stevens. I like his fighting style better. It's really a huge contrast of styles, which usually you would say grappler versus striker would be a contrast of styles, but it's a flashy striker against a brawler in a way. And uh, I just like Stevens. I think he's gritty. I think he hits hard. He's, uh, you know what? I know everybody's gonna think I'm, I'm done for this because the beat's just mowing through everybody, but I think Stevens is gonna get him. Uh, I just think Stevens has fought tougher competition. Uh, I don't know who the beat's been fighting overseas, but you know, I've seen him go to a few decisions and you know, if you wanna fight Jeremy Stevens for a long time, he's gonna catch you. Uh, he hits hard, so uh, I'm gonna go with the, with the upset Stevens on this one. Um, you know, I might be wrong there. Yeah, and you're right. I think he's like three, four to one underdog, but I can see it. I'm not sure if it was you or someone else that told me that Zabit does tend to fade a little bit in the later rounds because he cuts a lot of weight and he's a real tall, lanky guy, like six foot one and a half or six two <laughs> at what featherweight. When was the last time you weighed 145 pounds? Man, I can't even remember. That's how long ago it was. <laughs> I hear it. I hear long it. Time. You know, but yeah, so it really could be. I mean, it's going to be interesting because Zabit loves to show off his dynamic striking, although he's a really great wrestler from Dagestan, yeah, the same place as uh, Habib uh, Nurmagomedov. But he does like, it seems like he likes to be able to go to the ground only when he wants to. Right. But uh, if he's smart, then he may decide he wants to early on against Jeremy Stevens. But Jeremy Stevens' takedown defense is pretty good. He's a tough yeah. Iowa boy, and even though he didn't have a huge wrestling pedigree, you know, he, he knows that sport. You can't live in Iowa without knowing, knowing wrestling. So I think That's Jeremy true. does have a good chance there. It's going to be a great fight, though. Um, how about Cord Cody Garbrandt against Pedro Munoz? That should be an interesting fight. Pedro fighting out of our friend's... Uh, our friends over at uh, American Top Team Camp, and not not enough, not as many people know him as Cody, but yes, uh, tough, tough guy. What do you think of that fight? I feel like Munoz doesn't get near near enough respect. Uh, I mean, he just quietly beats everybody. You know, uh, gosh, you know the guys he's lost to are top two, top three guys. Um, I just I feel like you know I don't know how Cody's gonna respond. I mean. We'll see how he acts after Dillashaw, you know, got him a couple times. I, that might have broke his confidence because one thing Cody always was was overly confident. And uh, he's been kind of chinny, you know, with Dillashaw. You know, I would, I'm going to say Garbrandt just because he has all that big fight experience and his only losses are to Dillashaw. And, you know, maybe that's just a case of the guy having his number. You know, sometimes it's like that. So, um you know, I, Munoz can get him for sure, but I'm going to have to go with Garbrandt just because of his experience and his, his big fight experience. I know Munoz has more fights, but I feel like Garbrandt's fought killers right out the gate. So. Yeah, I think you're right on that analysis as far as Garbrandt. I, I'm going to pick toward Munoz because I like the guys at ATT so much. We've had so many of their fighters on here. Uh, so I'm going to cheer for Munoz, but I think... Uh, I, you know, I'm going to say I think Munoz can do it, but it's going to be real tough, and Garbrandt can yeah, take you out of there anytime. Good. Garbrandt also needs this win. Uh, if his confidence isn't damaged enough, uh, his confidence, then a third loss here in a row would really possibly put the you know, icing on the cake against him. So exactly. I know he's going to fight hard. I hope it's a great fight. Um, two more really interesting fights, and I'd love to have a detailed breakdown on how you think these fights are going to play out. Let's start out with Ben Askren in his UFC debut against former welterweight champion, ruthless Robbie Lawler. Yeah. Um, God, man, I'm a huge Lawler fan. If you're not, something's wrong with you. Um, man, I, I know what Askren's going to do. And, you know, so does, you know, Lawler. But Lawler's got such a great sprawl. He might be able to keep it on the feet and, uh, and, and land. And, you know, I just, I feel like, God, man, 
I feel like Askren's probably just going to grind out a decision, but I really hope that doesn't happen. I hope Lawler knocks him out. Um, I don't like the wrestlers who just go in there and just wrestle and don't do anything else. They just try to, you know, get the easiest route to victory, which, I mean, it makes sense, but, you know, it's just bores me. I'm a striker. I like strikers. I, I like Lawler. He's just a savage. So I hope he sprawls and brawls and just knocks him out. But I feel like if I had to put my money on it, I would say Askren's probably going to grind out a decision win and it's going to be boring. Makes sense. Uh, and it could very well go that way. With Askren's training partner being Tyron Woodley, who actually did stop Lawler, but he stopped him really early on with a big overhand right that, that he can't superimpose his skills on his good friend uh, Askren. So Askren's not going to develop a great overhand right with power just because he knows Tyron Woodley. But do you think as a fighter that Woodley can give him anything helpful in that fight just on having spent a minute and a half in the, in the cage with Lawler or probably not? Uh, I think the, the best thing Woodley can give Askren is just being a training partner of Askren. Woodley's a beast, man. I, I have no doubts in my mind anything about Woodley. Woodley does not get as much respect as he deserves. And training with Woodley every day gets you ready for pretty much anybody in that division. I guarantee it. So, you know, Woodley yep. can throw bombs too. So um, if he's training with Woodley, I'm sure he'll be ready for Lawler. Absolutely. It's going to be an amazing fight. His goal is going to be to ragdoll Lawler. And hopefully Lawler gets in at least some shots. I'm thinking probably Askren takes it too. But I'd love to see Lawler do well. And speaking about Woodley, Tyron Woodley, who I believe also is underappreciated and should be more respected than he is. We had him on our show uh, a little bit over a year ago. Real gentleman, nice guy. I've heard great things about him as well uh, from people that train with him. Uh, he's taken on Kamaru Usman, another high, high-level wrestler. Usman is younger than Woodley and taller and a little bit, little bit rangier, uh, uh, but much less experienced. Uh, how does that fight match up? Uh, and how do you think, what's going to happen when the bell rings, do you feel, in Woodley versus Usman? Um, this one, I don't have any doubts in my mind that Woodley's going to win. Uh, I think Woodley's Usman 2.0. I mean, he's better at everything, in my opinion, than Usman. I'm, this is not a knock on Usman at all. I think once Woodley's gone, I think Usman one day can hold the title. I think he's got great wrestling. He, you know, he he can drop bombs when he needs to. Um, I just feel like he's nobody's beating Woodley, in my opinion. I just I don't I don't see him doing it. I don't see Cummington doing it. I don't see anyone doing it. I just I don't see. I mean, unless he gets into some super fights, I, he's going to be chill. After seeing what he did to Darren Till. Yeah. It's the, there's the, he he's gonna be there until he wants to leave. Uh, I think you're probably right. Do you think he takes out Usman, or do you think there's a lot of wrestling going on, or mostly striking? Do you think anyone gets any takedowns there? What do you think? I think what do you think? I think he finishes him. Uh, probably probably rocks him, uh, then TKOs him on the ground. Makes sense in the first round, second, third, fourth, fifth. If you had to pick, I don't I don't see it going past three. Makes sense. What if your namesake, Colby Covington, was next for uh, Woodley? Same result? Yeah, same result. Just another guy, you know. Just I actually hate that he has the same name as me. Yeah. I get, some hate, I get hate mail on Instagram. I'm like, yo, it's not me. It's, oh, man. It's that other guy. Yeah. Yeah. He did take it too far saying those terrible things about Brazilians. I mean, I, you understand, and you're you're a young fighter in this sport. You understand wanting to get some attention and wanting to get some love and wanting to get some publicity. But and and, and maybe he didn't mean those things. Certainly, there were people at American Top Team that were high level that were Brazilians. Some of them honestly just say he's just a decent guy who just made a desperate choice to try to uh, get some attention. I don't know if you remember this, but before he became the heel. He was uh, he was known for taking a picture of himself standing somewhere out in the Midwest with a sign that says we'll fight for food. I remember, that. remember that. So I yeah. think that didn't get him anywhere except for people feeling bad or embarrassed for him. And I think he kind of maybe decided saying, well, you know, if that's not going to work, let me go and be the heel. But that was unfortunate. Can you can, can he backtrack off that Colby? I mean, is there any point where he should come on and, and say, hey, listen, I don't think that Brazilians are filthy animals and dogs. That was just a bunch of BS for me to try to get some attention. 
I have nothing but respect for Brazilians. All apologies. Can he do that, or or would that somehow make him look even worse if he said that? Um, he would, uh, you know, me personally, I'm all about you know forgiving people for things. I I know what he's doing, you know. Yeah, you know, I know I know him and John had beef, so I know John knows him pretty well. So I'm not crazy about him, but. Uh, you know, you can always apologize for things and say, you know, look, guys, I was being the heel and I've got nothing but respect and all this. But, I, man, I can tell you those Brazilians do not play around about their pride in their country. So that one he might not ever get back. You know, if he said something about me and came up to me and apologized as a man like he does a lot of the other fighters, said stuff about him, I'd be like, no, it's no big deal, man. I, it's all good. But those Brazilians are not <laughs> – they're not as forgiving, I can imagine. Yeah, and the stuff he said to call someone's, uh, you know, nationality, things like yeah. that, you know, because Brazilians are great people, some of the toughest yeah. people out there. I remember when he went over there and won a fight in uh, in Brazil and said that stuff, and I remember I was talking to our guys at uh, our friends at American Top Team, and this yeah. is on an interview because uh, he trains mostly under Mike uh, Mike Brown, former WEC yeah. champ. And I was talking to one of the other coaches there, uh, Dean Thomas, who I respect a lot. And uh, and I said, after he won, I said, I'd imagine they didn't try to go out to any steakhouses in Brazil or anything like that. And he said, not only that, he said that they were they were they were wearing wood wool uh, winter jackets with the the hood in the front pulled so tight. He said he could only see Mike Brown's nose coming through the hood and they were heading to the airport as soon as possible because yeah. you, you could imagine people probably would have tried to kill colby don't you think oh for sure over there yeah 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 over there they don't play around i, I know a few fighters that have, have gotten into some problems over there like in hotel lobbies and things like that they you know they're passionate fight fans like if, if you're a fighter you got to love brazilians passion um you know i wish most of the united states would get behind our guys you know like yeah. like they get behind theirs yeah um, absolutely and i wasn't trying to say they would physically try to to physically kill him because i'm not trying to imply that at all about Probably. people bills but don't insult someone's nationality and right. then think you're going to be popular uh, hanging out there in their country so i i don't know about that colby covington and now it seems like he he unpopularized uh, himself enough if that's a word uh, uh, that he lost this fight and now he's even going further to alienate yeah. the ufc management against him i don't know who's going to be left liking this guy do you i i, do, I, I just i don't get it because he's he's very good yeah you know his, yeah. his, his style is tough to beat he beat rda like a drum you know and rda is good i just i feel bad because i feel like you know I, i've talked to people who know him personally and they say he's just obviously pulling this gimmick but i feel like he would be climbing the ladder anyway so yeah. i just I, you know i I, there's ways to do it. I was raised differently. Uh, I would never do those kind of things. Uh, you know, my parents would whoop me. So uh, I'm just going to, you know, I'll just win and keep climbing and, you know, do it respectfully. I like that. Take the high road, man. Speaking about fights, I know you're going to be cheering for John Jones. Anthony Smith, uh, I know you're not in the camp for this fight, but you've trained with John many times. How does this fight unfold? Obviously, I know you're biased because John's a friend and training partner. Uh, is this going to be a wipeout? Is it, should this fight be 12 to 1 or 15 to 1? Is it going to be like John basically goofing around like Floyd Mayweather did against uh, the, the Japanese uh, fighter in that exhibition? Or do you think that John is taking Smith really seriously and, and this could be a, an interesting challenge for him? Uh, he's taking Anthony Smith very seriously. Um, if you don't, Anthony Smith will beat you. Anthony Smith has a great skill set. He's been around a long time. People don't understand how many fights this guy has. Um, you know, he's looking good at 205. Um, you know, I actually like the guy a lot. I'm, I, I was actually a big fan of his striking. Uh, I like his style uh, before they announced this fight. So, uh, obviously, you know, team bones all day. But um, when Anthony Smith isn't fighting John Jones, I'm rooting for Anthony Smith. I think he's a, he's a good dude. He does things right, the right way. Um, I just think John wins however John wants to win. No disrespect to Anthony at all. John's the best fighter ever lived. Best fighter <laughs> And I don't know if anybody's going to come along. It'll be a long time to take his spot. Um, he's just on a whole different level, man. There's levels, and then there's him way far. Yep. Oh, wait. Look at what DC did to Stipe, and look at what John did to DC. Yep. 
Absolutely. He, he, he can go take the heavyweight belt whenever he wants it. He can, he's just, however he decides to finish Anthony is how he's going to finish him. Yep. And I'm saying that with all due respect to Anthony Smith, there's just nothing anybody's going to be able to do at Un- all. Understood. Understood. Uh, in the last minute or so that we have you, Colby, what's your timeline on getting into a big show like Bellator or UFC? Do you have anything in your head that you're hoping for it in 2020 or, or this year? Or what are you thinking about that? Um, actually, uh, Jason House, my agent from Meridian Sports, he's uh, the best agent, in my opinion. He uh, The day after my fight, he had some options for me. Um, looking at, hopefully, UFC Contender Series. Um, I'm a 205-er, so you don't need that many fights at 205 to you know get some attention. Uh, it's a, kind of a scarce division. Yep. Um, uh, Bellator actually texted me yesterday, Ian Matthews did. Um, Maybe for a show, I, I was looking at the shows, maybe in late March, I don't know. Um, you know, I, 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 I kind of want to roll, you know, with the UFC, um, but, you know, it's good to have options. So hopefully at the end of this year, I'll be contender series or, you know, thrown in a, you know, if a 205 or foot falls out, they'll throw me in to get slaughtered, kind of like a, you know, lamb to the slaughter. And I just see it as an opportunity to get in there and shock everybody. So hopefully something like that. Absolutely. I'd love to see you go in there and show your skills here in 2019. Let me know when you get your next fight signed. We'll bring you back and talk some more. I will, most definitely. Well, it was a pleasure having you here, at Colby Landers. Uh, what's the best social media address for people to hit you up and support you? Uh, probably Instagram, C Landers 41. That's uh, where I do most of my stuff and all that. Uh, that'd probably be the spot to go. Excellent. Well, we'll have people check it out. Show Cody Colby some love. He is a good man, good guy from the South, respectful, hardworking guy uh, from a great family. And uh, we're all uh, we're all cheering for him. And uh, I will be cheering hard for you. Stay in touch, and we'll make sure to follow your career closely and uh, and keep supporting you. Thank you. Appreciate you for the time. Thanks, everybody. You're very welcome. Have a great night. You too. Thanks. That was Colby Landers. Good guy, Dr. Adam Warner. Seems like a good, good, uh, good all American kid from over there. He played at football at Ole Miss and he's over there in Arkansas. Uh, really good Southern guy. A lot of po- good manners and polite, uh, good folks over there for the most part. There's crappy folks in every place in the world as well. <laughs> but, you know, he's definitely one of those good, uh, polite Southern guys. And, uh, you know, I, I played a little football myself only in, in the uh, elementary, junior high uh, school level, but uh, love the sport as well don't talk about that too much because it's been eclipsed so much by mma and boxing before that but football does uh, have good athletes that do have a little bit of uh, an extra something uh when they can take that level of athleticism to our sport don't you agree absolutely absolutely i i'm excited to see him come up i yep. mean come on he's he's training with one of the best am i right not john bones jones yeah. i mean you know you know it's it's gonna be exciting watching him in three or four more fights and it's like he just let us know uh he's in talks already yeah uh, and really hoping for the contender series and that would be exciting to see him on the contender series dana white's contender series yeah. absolutely love to see that love to see him on D T C S is <laughs> D. I don't know. Why do they say D? Yeah, D W. That's it. D W C S. Dana White Contender Series. <laughs> that's what you see if you look in the ratings online. D W C S. Anyway, love to see that. Or in Bellator, he will be a contender uh, next week. And also, so I guess we will be doing a special interview on Friday with Jeremy, and then we'll plan to release it that night, uh, Doc. Or... It'll probably be Saturday morning. I, I don't want to give any promises. When we do pre-records, I can do a little more with it. The episode, you, you know, we don't get these glitches, stuff like that when we pre-record. So I, I'm going to pay a little extra attention for everybody out there that did tune in, hoping to catch him tonight. Uh, you know, uh, I apologize. Colin apologizes. Jeremy apologizes. Uh, things happen when you're in camp and you got to cut weight and, and hit the pads. So we understand, and we will make sure we get you the highest quality episode possible, uh, a little super session. Uh, that's exactly what these super sessions yeah. are for. Yep. So we'll, we'll do it. We'll knock it out and get it out by Saturday morning, mid-morning at the latest. And, uh, yeah, just stay tuned on our Facebook page. In the meantime, I want to say thank you to everybody for tuning in tonight, any other night, every night. Uh, Make sure to go to our Facebook page, give it a like, give all of our uh, uh, posts a like, keep up with them, and and follow our page closely because you can get all the information that makes you the expert, bar none, the best, uh, most knowledgeable person in your community uh and and you can go to the bar and really show your stuff when it comes to mma just by hanging out on mma power hours facebook page 
There's a lot more there than you realize. As you drink, you can spout out or espouse all your MMA knowledge. Absolutely true. Uh, don't drink too much and always drink and uh, don't drive when you drink. Uh, so Friday, we'll be doing a Super Sessions live in-depth interview, but it, it won't be streamed live. We will release it either Saturday or Sunday, so look out for that. And that, But that will be recorded live on Friday in-depth with Jeremy Stevens, uh, only a week or so ahead of that great March 2nd fight against Zabit Megomed Sharp. Uh, for next week, uh, the 27th, we got a great show. Uh, Glory fighter, uh, kickboxing Muay Thai. Uh, this man does it all. He is fighting for Glory, the Glory organization right now. Mr. Troy Jones, one of the most exciting men. Look on YouTube for knockouts. Troy Jones is an electrifying uh, Muay Thai fighter and kickboxer. Uh, we have Jason Hollywood Chambers. You've seen him doing commentator commentary uh, on UFC Fight Pass. They're going to incorporate him on their team. Loved when he did Human Weapon about 10 years ago. You guys should go YouTube that. That was a great show where he went around the country uh, taking maybe a one-week crash course in various different combat arts and then having rounds where where he fought the very best guy in their country or one of them really exciting show they showed different maths impact all kinds of cool graphics and 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 broke down the great martial arts and combat sports um uh with jason hollywood chambers really cool dude can't wait to talk to him and isaac valley flag former ufc and strike force fighter um he's got some interesting news about possibly fighting or doing uh some other thing involving a lot of action and he as well will be joining our team at the mma power hour super cool dude isaac valley flag so i think we only have about a minute or so left my hope is when we come back i will not have this uh hernia disc and pinched nerve because it's been tough i've been like barely able to sit down here in this pain and discomfort but i love being here hope you guys love the show cut me slack for looking like i'm all physically jittery it's not because i'm drinking tons of coffee and uh caffeine just hurt but wanted to say uh say this in, in my ending and add something a little bit interesting let's not be judgmental a lot of times the those who we judge and 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 you know poke fun at or criticize that can frequently end up being something that comes back to us so you know let's not judge you know let's not be living in uh, in a glass house and throwing stones you know we don't want to laugh at anyone else's misfortune because uh, then that misfortune could come on to us tenfold let's be good people and uh you know go out there look out for your friend your neighbor your co-worker your relatives your pets all of them need the love especially your pets uh, make a phone call tell someone you got their back you love them be that guy be that girl spread the love in a positive way it'll come back to you tenfold i uh, really appreciate your coming in and spending this time with us for dr adam Rorda, i'm colin crandall for the mma power hour and i'm tapping out <laughs>